What's up and welcome back to Bar Down Talking Hockey, episode number 103, presented by the Bar Room Network. My name is Vinny Parisi, and I am extremely excited to be talking some hockey with each and every one of you today. And this right here, this is Frankie Mueller, and he's getting super excited for the Vegas Golden Knights postseason run because he's wearing his Vegas Golden Knights draft hat from 2017. Frank, who did the Golden Knights draft that day when you got that hat? No clue. No clue. <laughs> No clue, this guy says. Let's I see if believe, you even say it, but it, it might not even ring a bell. I believe I know them. They drafted three players that day because they had three first-round picks because they were really, really well-ran when they first came into the league. So, you know, it helped. And I believe they have traded all three of them. I'm not sure if they traded one of them. There's one I'm iffy on where he is right now. Well, let's hear it. I want to see if it rings a bell. Sixth overall, they took Cody Glass. He was the first ever draft pick by the Vegas Golden Knights. And I believe later in the first round, can't tell you any numbers. And Cody Glass is the one where I I honestly have no clue where he is right now. He might even be playing for them right now. Uh, I, I like to think I know a lot about hockey. Some things slip through the cracks. You know, you don't know every little thing about every little player. But I try to. I try really hard to. But Cody Glass, I honestly have no clue where he is right now. If Skokes or someone in the chat right now wants to, Travis, what's going on, wants to tell me where Cody Glass is right now. For some reason, I think it's Dallas. But maybe not. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But I also believe in that same draft, the Golden Knights selected Drake Batherson. Oh. who they then traded to Ottawa in the Mark Stone trade. And then I believe they also took who I, I had it in my head and then I lost it. Oh, Suzuki, Nick Suzuki. Wow. They traded really? to Montreal. I don't remember that. In the Max Pacioretty trade. Wow. I believe. And now Suzuki's their leading scorer or one of their leading scorers in Montreal. Probably going to be a big part of their core for a long time. Um, yeah, I believe those are the three that Vegas selected that day when we were at the draft in 2017. We went in thinking it was a stinky draft. There's some freaking good players. In there. I'm happy we went. Oh, me too. I mean, he shares a superstar, 30 goal scorer. He'll be nominated for the Selkie trophy. I think, um, Nolan Patrick stunk second overall. I think he's out of the league or he's in Vegas is like triple a team, uh, AHL, mm-hmm. uh, third overall Miro Heiskin in is a top 10 NHL defenseman, uh, fourth overall Kale McCars, a top five player in the NHL. Absolutely. Uh, five, Elias Pedersen, uh, superstar, just as good. Um, you could debate between him and Heischer for second best player in the draft. I would rather the two way guy, uh, but I would I say that knowing I have Hughes on my team, Stop so Skokes. it makes it easier. What's going on, Skokes? Um, I'm trying to think of who went. Uh, Suzuki went or Glass went sixth. Um, there were some really, really, really good players. The Blackhawks thought it would be a good idea to select Henry Yoki Haru, 17th overall. They traded up to get him instead of drafting Ottinger, so they knew they had a goalie for the future. And Dallas got Ottinger. Dallas got Ottinger and Robertson in the first and second <laughs> round. Talk about re-innovating your franchise in one draft. You draft your leading scorer and your superstar netminder 
in one draft. I mean, the Dallas, the Dallas Stars did the best. Because I always said I, I loved the Devils draft because they got they got Heischer first. They got Boquist, who's a nice third-line player now. You know, scores goals here and there. Silky Mitts doesn't take penalties. Um, and then the third round, they got Zetterland, who was scoring lots of goals for them, and then they traded him for Timo Meyer. So, the, you know, it worked out for them, too. But, man, that 2017 draft, we'll always look fondly on it because of our, because of our association. To I it. can't wait till it comes back to Chicago. I would go away for it, too, if mm-hmm. it was close enough or even if it wasn't. It was fun. You could make a weekend out of it. Absolutely. Dude. We only went to the first day. Do they have tickets for day two? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it would have been, it, it been an extra 10. We had something to do, like, together. I don't, I don't remember what it was. I just know we couldn't make it. You, me, and Joey couldn't make it. Um, but yeah, fun times, fun times. Before Frank- you say anything, I want to give a shout out to Travis for being here a half hour early. He this this comment came in at one thirty two p.m. He was ready to go. He was sitting here waiting for the live stream. I don't know if he's here now. That's dedication. This is the first time in 103 episodes that I've ever seen a comment come in a half hour earlier than the show starts. I mean, that's dedication. That's unbelievable. That's someone who likes the content. It's the first time. And I can't say I blame them because we we have a good time here. We have a good time here. So, Frank, I have a lot of hockey. Yeah, That's what we like to see, Travis. (laughs) Travis. Who's your favorite team? Is it the Chicago Blackhawks? I'm curious. I believe Travis is a White Sox fan too, which is dope. That makes you cool. But yeah, who what uh, what other teams do you like? Are there teams besides the Blackhawks you watch? Like Frankie watches the Golden Knights. I'm a Devils fan, but I watch the Bruins a lot. I watch every California team a lot. I watch almost every Edmonton Oilers game. I mean, I've been like hardcore dedicated to the Edmonton Oilers this year. Like, there are lots of teams I'm not a fan of that I watch. Okay, so the Hawks are your team. Um, but, yeah, if there are other teams you like to watch, let us know. We like to hear – Frankie and I like to hear that probably more than who your actual favorite team is because everybody has their actual favorite team that pisses you off. You're overhyped about them. You're biased. You think they're going to win the lottery no matter what happens. Um, and then there are other teams you watch that you watch a little more subjectively. Um, oh, like the Kraken and the Knights. You guys just like new you, Frankie and Travis locking hands on things that are new. When Houston and Atlanta come to town, maybe it's come, just the Seattle thing. Mariners, yeah, Kraken, yeah. Vegas. You can understand, yeah. Vegas, you can understand. I agree with Travis here. Kraken unis are fine. Yeah, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see what the two come up with for the Winter Classic. Oh yeah, it's gonna be elite. It's going to be a different kind of Winter Classic because normally the Winter Classic is all about, hey, who's old? Let's let's come up with some old shit. Let's throw it back. Let's think back to when our grandfathers were playing hockey. Now it's going to be like, what are our grandkids going to want to see? But it's like they have the freedom to do whatever they want because they're the newer franchises. There's no pressure. No. Like when the Hawks are in it, the Bruins are in it, it's sort of like, all right, what are they going to do? Are they going to throw it old school? Are they going to do this? The Kraken and Vegas don't have that. No, they, they don't have care. no pressure whatsoever. Yeah, they don't care about what happened in 1970 when Bobby Orr, <laughs> Bobby Orr used to take the train to play Travis, the Canadians. I heard Milt Schmidt was the conductor back in the day. Uh, Frank, there's a lot of hockey. <laughs> I mean, we're not just talking NHL on this show either today. Acknowledge because, Travis. Uh, that's oh, Travis likes guy. the Mariners. Well, you know what, Frank? You're the one who chooses to just, like, isolate yourself in the baseball world. Travis is in South Burbs Hitman all the time. You don't care. You don't join the conversation for baseball. You just come. You show up here on Wednesday, and you want Travis to come to you. You got to come to Travis, well, too, pal. Um, Let's get to hockey in period number one. Welcome to period one, Frank. Hockey's the snowman. <laughs> I'm There's... waiting for somebody to come in and be like, I thought this was a hockey show. Where's your hockey? They'll come in in the third period. Yeah. 
and yeah. like, where's your hockey? Well, be here now. In the third period, when we're talking about the World Baseball Classic, <laughs> they'll come up and freaking say, I thought this was a hockey goal. <laughs> Even though for right now, we're about to start talking hockey <laughs> for the next, you know, two hours or whatever it is. So hopefully this is a good time. Frank, the NCAA, I know you like college sports. Oh, yeah. I know hockey's your favorite sport, but I don't think you've put the two together yet in your life. Not really. I think it's time you start, and I'm going to take this show to convince you. Uh Uh-oh, my lights are flickering. Your lights are flickering. It's not even bad out, dude. Get this Walmart technology of yours. At least go to Target or something. It has nothing to do with the internet. It has to do with the call com ed or something. Call com ed. What is going on? Frank, the NCAA men's ice hockey bracket has been announced. Did you take a look at it? Uh Uh-huh. What do you think? It's very interesting that in the one region, there's three Minnesota teams, which makes it only to where one can make it to the final. They don't want a Minnesota-Minnesota final, which I thought was pretty interesting because I think Minnesota State and St. Cloud State, they're very underrated teams. A lot of people look at those schools. I mean, especially if you're not a college hockey fan, like those school, those types of schools aren't in like college football, college basketball. And if they are, they're not good. They're, they're more hockey schools. So when you look at it from, you know, just a general point of view, you're like, Oh, well, they, who are they? They probably stink, but no, they're actually really good teams. And it's Minnesota will probably beat Canisius. So we're going to probably have a Minnesota battle in the second round, which will be very interesting. And not only that, but the round following that, we could potentially get the reigning champs, Denver, play Minnesota, which would just be elite. They would have to get through my guys, BU, though, Denver. I know. And that's my pick <laughs> to come out of that region, the Manchester Regional but I like Minnesota and the Fargo to come out of that side. I, I, mean, I have Minnesota in the championship. I mean, Logan Cooley. Don't forget about Logan Cooley. You know who his line mate is? Who? Your guy Snuggerud, St. Louis Blues draft pick. And you know what? You know what I can't wait for? Snuggerud's going to play for the Blues next season. You don't even. And he's going to freaking score a goal against the Blackhawks. <laughs> and Frankie is going to be so – he's like, I hate Snuggerud. What was I even thinking? Even though, like, as you get older and you start following the younger kids more, it makes it harder to hate them when they play for your favorite pro team's rivals. I've come to know that through the years. Like, if I was 10 years old, I would despise Adam Fox. I would hate his guts. But we watched the Frozen Four or the tournament when he was with Harvard, and, like, he wasn't even with the Rangers yet. They hadn't traded for him yet. And I'm like, this is the guy. This is the guy. He's going to be one of the best defensemen in the NHL. And so I'm sitting here. I'm loving Adam Fox. I think Frankie froze again. But it might be my fault. And I have no idea if it's my fault. So we're going to get that figured out really quick. But, well, I don't know if it's him. Frank. Okay, we will see. I will keep talking. Okay, maybe it was Frankie this time because now I'm just alone on the screen. So, you know, the NCAA bracket, it makes it harder for you to hate people full time once they make it to the pro game. And it's going to be interesting. Um, And then you move on over to the other side. And you have a couple other Big Ten teams over there. And, of course, they don't put Michigan and Ohio State in the same uh, region there because they want them to eventually meet. But it's And they kind of made it where it seems like they're on a collision course here, Michigan and Ohio State. And I don't think they would have did that if they thought that one of them wasn't going to escape. They'd have them play a little on the earlier side. But Ohio State's in the Bridgeport region, and Michigan is in the – Allentown reason we got an update from Frankie Mueller he said he will be back soon (laughs) he's mad this is ridiculous um he probably just doesn't want to talk college hockey is probably what the real issue is like what what are you doing college hockey is amazing and 
with the way the NCAA March Madness bracket has gone for a lot of people, this is going to be better. It really is because in basketball, it's been a lot of upsets and like that upsets are great. They're fun in the moment, but then the bad team moves on and gets shelled in the second round. Like a lot of the time. So, you know, here you got players who are going to play in the NHL later this season competing for this here title. And it's going to be really, really, really fun. Um, the team I'm looking at the most, though, obviously, is Michigan. And Michigan has probably the most pedigree going into this tournament. Obviously, part of the Allentown Regional. They're going up against Colgate in the first round. Obviously, Penn State is also in their little bracket there. But these games are going to be on ESPNU in that bracket. Um, throughout, They're scattered throughout ESPN2, ESPN news and then ESPNU depending on which game we're talking about but this Michigan team you start and end with talking about Luke Hughes he's the New Jersey Devils number one prospect and he's the younger brother of their leading scorer Jack Hughes and the difference is Luke is a defenseman and their oldest brother Quinn Hughes is on the Vancouver Canucks obviously Luke has had an amazing season for Michigan. He's one of the best defensemen in college hockey right now. Changed his game up a little bit this season. Last year, it was all about offense. This year, it's all about everything. He's doing it all. And then uh, Blackhawks prospect Frank Nazar is on the team, as well as um, Seamus Casey, who's the New Jersey Devils second rounder from last year. And then... You know, the the teams who drafted those guys, those fans, those teams, they're going to be watching them the most. But all NHL fans are going to be keeping their eyes on Adam Fantilli, who will be the number two overall pick in the 2023 NHL draft. Whoever wins the second lottery will select Fantilli. And Michigan is on – they're on a a little bit of a tour here. They they believe they can win this thing. And Ohio State got put in a bracket with a couple teams that I think they can win. Quinnipiac, Harvard, we'll see. Quinnipiac always has pedigree, so does Harvard. But if Ohio State can come out and play Michigan in the semi, that'd be really, really good for the game, I think. Um, this is this has a chance to be a Big Ten-dominated tournament this year because I think the world of Minnesota will get to be you in a second. But, Frank, I want to get back to what we were talking about right when you froze. First of all, are you okay? I hope. I mean... <laughs> I'm livid. I'm <laughs> livid. Right when he starts talking, me, 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 internet, me. Can uh, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, we're. I, I just don't understand. Connect to a hotspot next time if you have to. It works yeah. every time. My, I don't have a hotspot on my phone. Oh, well, I used it. to. I don't know what happened. Well, we'll see. Maybe my phone's too old. Is your uh, internet been having issues? No. Oh. Well, it'll figure itself out then. It, it's not the internet. It's the power. Oh. The power went out for a sec. Oh. Yeah, the lights were flickering. The power went out, so everything shut off. The internet, anything hooked up to electricity was out. Yeah. Honestly, that makes me feel better. That Because what are the odds the power goes out six times? No, it shouldn't. It's no, better than internet, having an internet yeah. issue. Yeah. yeah, the internet's fine. Oh, okay. Then we're good. Um, We were talking about Snuggerud. Uh-huh. Your boy. I'm not looking forward to facing him as a blue. Do you agree with my sentiment, though? It becomes harder to hate your rivals when you follow Junior and all that more. A little bit, yeah. Because, like, it happens to me in football now, too. Before, I just loved seeing all the – I loved hating all the Packers, all the Vikings, all the Lions. But if, you know, someone I really loved while they were at, you know – Alabama or Georgia, and they mm-hmm. go to freaking those teams. What am I going to do? All of a sudden, just start hating players I absolutely loved three months right. ago. Like that's just not that's not really how I roll. And it's be kind of come becoming that way in hockey too. Like I don't hate Adam Fox. I didn't even know Adam Fox was going to end up being a Ranger because he didn't play a single college game as <laughs> Rangers property. And, uh, you know, we watched Harvard play in all those games. So mm-hmm. Snuggerud, he's going to be awesome for the Blues. And I'm very Absolutely. much looking forward to seeing 
his line with Logan Cooley. Um, and then they have uh, Nyes, the Toronto Maple Leafs second rounder, on their line with them. And, like, that kid's probably going to play in the playoffs with the Leafs. It's very possible that he plays oh, sure. in the playoffs with the Leafs. And mm-hmm. that line could get them out of this Minnesota-heavy uh, Fargo regional. Um, another team I wanted to talk about a little bit, I went through Michigan. Is there anything on Michigan you want to throw in? I think Fantilli's going to win the Hobie Baker. Yeah. And for those who don't know, the Hobie Baker is essentially the Heisman Trophy for college hockey. I, I really do. Yeah, I mean, he's been outstanding. Un- unreal, unreal season. He's got 27 goals. Yeah. It's a lot. It was a lot. Um, I saw one of them in person. Yeah. Kind of kind of cool little tidbit. It was probably his unlikeliest goal. Have you ever seen the, the Hobie Baker winner in person before? No. Uh, not in a college uniform. No, I meant in like college. Yeah, no, I've seen Hobie Baker award winners in person. Yeah, just not. They were with their NHL team, right? Um, Will Butcher, I've seen in person. I believe Alexander Kerfoot was a Hobie Baker award winner. Uh, did TJ Oshie really? win one? Did TJ Oshie win one? Like, I'm pretty sure. I know Parisi was nominated, but he didn't win it. I don't remember. There's a lot of really good Hobie Baker award winners in the NHL right now. Um, I wish I got to see um, Paul Correa in person. I never got to see Paul Correa in person. I'm pretty sure he won the Hobie Baker. He was the first Hobie Baker winner to win a Stanley Cup, I think. With who? Anaheim. Oh. I think. I could be wrong on that. There's something along those lines, though. Frank Bu has this defenseman. Mm-hmm. His name is Lane Hudson. I've heard of him. He's a Montreal Canadiens draft pick. Well, he was drafted already, right? Yes. Yes, I, I've heard of that. Name. He will be on the Canadiens probably soon. If okay. Bu gets bounced, he might sign with them and play with them next week. <laughs> I can't wait to see his game in college hockey and then see what he does in the NHL. I'm talking, he's a little undersized, but just the way he sees the ice, I'm watching these highlights and I'm like, this Lane Hudson's unreal. How did he slip to Montreal in the second round? You look at some of the names ahead of him and it's like, I I just don't get it. And just, oh, I can't wait for, to see what becomes of Lane Hudson's career. I get, I get like NHL superstar vibes from him. Really? And I'm not saying like he's going to become an NHL superstar. I don't I don't throw that around because it's not necessarily likely, mm-hmm. but it's possible because of his skills and I'm very very into Lane Hudson. So, we'll see what he's able to help BU do. Frank, is there anything else from the tournament you wanted to touch on with your notes or whatever? I'm going to say it's Minnesota and Michigan in the championship. I agree. I'm with you on that. Does that kind of piss you off that I agree? No. We got we're smart people. We got big brains. I selfishly want the Devils to play three more games and then Michigan lose mm-hmm. whenever their next game is because then Luke Hughes can play every game without burning a, a deal a year on his contract once they get under nine games remaining. Uh they have 11 remaining. Um but I also I think it'd be good for him to go win this thing. So there are lots of different ways to look at it. You could be selfish and want him there now, or you can understand that there might be some valuable experience gained by going all the way. For sure. Um, absolutely. So we'll see what happens. But Luke Hughes will play for the Devils soon. Um, I don't know if it's he's exciting. gonna Yeah, I don't know if he's gonna McAvoy it and just step right in and play every playoff game. <laughs> or if, you know, we'll see. We will see. It depends. It depends on a lot. Speaking of young players that aren't in the NHL, Frank, we talked about Adam Fantilli, who's going to be the second overall pick in the 2023 NHL draft playing for Michigan. Connor Bedard is going to be the first overall pick. Is he really? 2023 NHL draft. He just scored his 70th goal of the season for the Regina Pats. Frank, what a freaking alien this guy is. 70 goals is insane. It happens 
more common than the NHL, obviously, but to put it into perspective, it's the first time that it's happened in the WHL since 1995, 1996. So, while it occurs more often, it's still very rare to see. I mean, it is unbelievable the amount of talent that this kid has at 17 years of age. It is unbelievable. And I believe the draft is in June, right? Or mm-hmm. Late part of June. So he's going to be drafted at 17 years old. He's going to play in the NHL at 18 years old. And whoever gets him is just going to be so lucky because I truly believe he he will perform maybe not up to his ceiling in his first season, but he's not going to be no Shane Wright first season or no Slavkovsky first season. He's going to be like elite first season, like maybe on the tier that McDavid was. I truly believe that. I'm trying to find this chart that I saw. Not only that, but he's also the sixth. Uh, Regina Pats player to achieve 70 goals. What I, I thought was pretty interesting. It's like they, they've pumped out some 70 goal scorers in their franchise. And um, the last time it happened, though, was 40 years ago for the St. Pats. Or, yeah, the Regina St. Pats. It was Dale Durkach, which I don't know who that is. Um, but, yeah, he had 70 goals. And 40 years later, Connor Bedard does it. I like stats like that. Yeah, that's they, unreal. And the Pats, decades. Yeah, the Pats are one of the more successful WHL teams. I would say they're they've been a little bit smarter than everybody else. Um, there are some good teams over there, though. The, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure the I can't. I'm pretty sure the Saskatoon Blades are in the WHL. There's a team from Seattle, obviously the Vancouver Giants, which is Brent Seabrook's team. I'm pretty sure he's the coach of. Um, there's all sorts of talent out there. I would call it probably oh, yeah. the sec- it's the second best CHL league. So, but you know, sometimes the all three of them pump out number one overall picks. Absolutely. I saw this chart on Facebook. Would I trade them for Bedard right now? There That's are three. It. There are three players in the no way category: <laughs> Connor McDavid, Austin uh-huh. Matthews, and Kale McCarr. Okay. There are four players in the no, but it's debatable category. Let's hear it. Jack Hughes, Uh Adam Fox, Jason Robertson, and Tage Thompson. I would trade two of those. Thompson and Fox? Um, No, it may be three. I would trade all but Jack Hughes. For? Bedard Bedard. right now. Right now. Yeah, like right now. Yeah, yeah, I would. We're not... We're talking five. I will risk it. I will risk it. Okay. Jack Hughes is different. Jack Hughes is good enough where I don't have to risk it. Yeah. But Jack- I mean, I'll take my chance. Robertson. I mean, all the other players are good, but I'll take my chances because I know what Bedard's potential is. Yeah. Bedard's potential is probably to be like as good, if not slightly better than Jack Hughes. Right. Um, Would I trade them for Bedard right now? And there are three players in the yes, but only because of age category okay leon dreisaitl nathan mckinnon and nikita kucherov wow that's hmm age does play a big factor age plays a big fact those are three guys who are a tad bit older than everybody else i've named all of these and all of these take into consideration that bedard could still easily be a bust it's risky trading all of them for Bedard. I'll take my chances with some of them. Me too. In the, there are four players in the yes, but it's close category. Mm-hmm. I would trade him, but it's close category. Okay. I like Mitch, Mitch Marner, Miko Rantanen, Charlie McAvoy, and Kirill Kaprizov. I completely agree. Some of those names, it's close, but yeah, absolutely. You'd have to. I I would, but I would be very – the only one of those four that would be hard for me is McAvoy. It's it's so hard to get a number one defenseman like that, like a top three guy in the league. (sighs) I know, but – McAvoy's Mike probably going to be nominated for the Norris Trophy. You worry about that problem when it comes to it. But if you're like – if you're guaranteed potentially a mini McDavid, come on. I know. 
And then easy yes, there are three players in the easy yes category. And I think I think they took like what they think is like the twelve or thirteen best players in the NHL. Yeah. And like tiered them here. All right, let's see. An easy yes is Barkov, Pasternak, and Matthew Kachuk. Yeah. And Matthew Kachuk is fourth in league scoring. Yeah, but yeah, and Pasternak Pasternak is second in goals. Like He's gone. I would, yeah, 100%. <laughs> Age two, though. I mean, they're not young. I, I, the 17-year-old playing as 18-year-old in the league. There's Age a lot is... of – this. all this chart showed me, Frank, was there's a lot of pressure on Bedard. They're ta- like, there are fans debating. They, they took the 10 or 11 best players in the NHL, and they tiered them on whether or not they would trade them for a 17-year-old. Maybe I'm saying I like, I don't know maybe because like where I am with the Blackhawks, I got nothing to lose. It's different being in the mind of a GM, but I guarantee you, all those GMs that you name from the different teams, the Bruins, uh, Colorado, whoever, they would consider some. I I truly think they would. I do too. I don't think there's one I vehemently disagree with. It's McKinnon. And the yeah, and McKinnon, yeah. I, I think McKinnon, McKinnon this season. I agree. This with you. season, McKinnon's been the second best player in the NHL. I think Austin Matthews is the second best player in the NHL, but this season, no injury, no changing their play to win more. Because Austin Matthews changed his play a little. He does take less shots and he's made more passes this season. That is an undeniable fact. It's not it has nothing to do with his skill or what he's capable of. Um, I believe if he wants to score 60 next year, he will. Right. Um, but this season, the Nate Dog has <laughs> been the second best player in the NHL. He's second in points per game. Frank, you know he's got like 80-something points and like 50-something games played this season. I missed a little bit of time with injury. He's fantastic. He's missed like, what, 20 games? And he's got in the high 80s for points? The Nate Dog is right there with Austin Matthews for second best player in the NHL. You also have to think like some of these teams, you also have to take into consideration how's their farm system. Regardless, Bedard should help their farm system out a little bit, right? You get that player that you didn't have in the system. It's like the Bruins. The Bruins are their farm system so bad. Yeah. <laughs> and even just adding a 17 year old onto the team, I mean, that, that makes up for a little ground, a little percentage of what you won't have in the future. Whereas somebody with a little better farm system, which who's got a really good farm system where their team's like pretty good. The devil, the wild, the devil's in the wild. Yeah. Okay. So like the wild is like, I would probably trade Caprice off, but we have a pretty good farm system. Do we need it? We're kind of there. Not it's like, it's different depending on the team that you're trying to see if you would trade them for or the players. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. Like, it's great to have a great player like Bedard, but if you have no future to build around them or players to build around them, what's the point? Yes. I do like this exercise, though, in terms of just, like, player for player. I like that. Player for player, would you? Uh, The only one I, like, the yes. percent of them, I would. Yeah. The yes, but it's close category is interesting to me because you got Ranton in. He will have 100 points. Mm-hmm. Mitch Marner, he will have 100 points, both on the young side still. Yeah. Uh, both, I think, of them are 26. So they still have 10 more years of being elite, maybe more. Um, we got another guy who's 37 that we're going to talk about here in a couple of minutes who's still very much elite. Like, you know, you don't just start sucking in your mid-30s. No. But uh, trading the thought of trading Kaprizov for Bedard one for one, like, would the Wild do it? I don't – I think they would. I think they would. But it's close. Like, I, like I've never seen a tier more accurate. Again, the only one I disagree with is McKinnon. I would put McKinnon in the no way category. I would not take that risk with the Nate Dog. No, he's great. Yeah. I love Nathan McKinnon. Me too. Um, the no, it's debatable section is interesting. Because, like, it goes to show what people think of Thompson and Robertson. Fox and Hughes, I understand. Fox has a Norris Trophy. Hughes was a number one overall pick, has 81 points at 21 years old. It is old. close. It is close. Some of those should be like, it's what, what category was that? No, but it's debatable. 
I would say like no, but oh well, yeah, I guess yeah, no, but it's available. No, but it's close is the same thing, right? Yeah, no, but it's close is the same thing. But the other one is yes, but it's close. I'd have like, who are they again? Hughes, Besides Hughes, I know Hughes. Fox, Robertson, and Thompson. See, I'd have Thompson, Robertson, and Fox, and yes, but it's debatable. Wow. It would be hard to trade a 50-goal man for a 17-year-old that hasn't proven shit. I'll take it. I'll take my chances. Frankie loves Bedard. Holy shit. Oh, we share the same birthday. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never let you live that down. You're going to hear it for the rest of the podcast days. He's going to be a member of the Sharks. Frankie's <laughs> going to be like, you know my second favorite team is actually now that I think about it? <laughs> we'll be in our 50s, and I'll say, Vin, you know Connor Bedard shares a birthday with me? Yeah, he'll be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> he'll have a podcast that we're listening to <laughs> him and frickin uh him and frickin matt boldy uh-huh. or something someone That'd super fun. young um frank it doesn't seem like any of the teams at the bottom of the nhl really want bedard all that bad lately oh my though. god like and we're not even just talking about the chicago blah we're talking about freaking everyone. And the Chicago Blah have actually kind of stunk the last couple of games. They're kind of getting back to their old stinky ways, and that's what I like to see. I Listen, I, I've put it out there so many times. I've taken hits from Chicago people, like family members, everyone. I don't care. I see how good the Devils are, and I know it's because they sucked for eight years. I know it. I know how good this team is going to be. Mm-hmm. I legitimately wouldn't be surprised if they win multiple cups in the Hughes Heesher era. I also wouldn't be surprised if they win zero because winning the cup is very hard. But like they're gonna have a chance every single year for the next ten, including this year. And it's I because did. they stunk. It is because they were so bad and won two lotteries and got you know players who can f- change the fortune of your franchise. I hope the Blackhawks. Their Blackhawks are twenty four forty and six. I hope they end the season 24, 52, and 6. Probably won't happen, but. It probably won't happen. Okay, 20. How about 26? I was going to say, give them two wins. 26, 50, and 6. And you have a total of 58 standings points. That gets you the best odds, I think. I think Columbus probably. Well, uh, I don't know, though. Things have gotten very interesting. They have, and that's what I was saying. The The sweepstakes have gotten unbelievable. All of a sudden, the Arizona Coyotes are above Philly and Montreal. Anaheim has played well. Trevor Zegers looks as good as ever. This Mason McTavish. Anaheim is probably the only team in the bottom four that won't be truly devastated if they don't get Bedard because they have like a foundation already in place and they just haven't put it together this year. The Chicago Blackhawks, San Jose Sharks, and Columbus Blue Jackets desperately need this guy. So that's what I want to talk about. So um, right now, the standings sit at Blue Jackets 51 points, Sharks 53 points, Hawks 54 points. The Blue Jackets had a very interesting game yesterday, VP. They sure did. Where they potted seven goals against the Washington Capitals to beat them in overtime. The Blue Jackets trailed three to nothing in the game, four to two, five to three, and six to five with less than five minutes to go. They end up winning the game in overtime. If they lose that game, they sit at 49 points. They have a four point lead for the worst record in the NHL. And that is just baffling that they pulled out a win of that caliber on the road in Washington. Now, I truly believe the Sharks are the worst team in the league. I think they're worse than Columbus right now. They've lost 12 of their last 13 games, which is horrendous and is why they're so low right now, where the Blackhawks and Columbus are throwing in a couple wins here and there, right? If Columbus loses that game, they're like, near and tasting having the best odds at 25% chance of getting Bedard. But nonetheless, they don't do that, which is, I saw it. And I was just like, my jaw hit the floor. They were down three, nothing, four to two, five to three and six to five. And they had a score late to tie it up and end up winning the game in overtime. I mean, as a Hawks fan, there's nothing better. I was happy to see that, which gives me hopes that the Hawks could drop 
lower than they are, but the Sharks have just been really horrendous. That that makes me a little nervous, to be honest with you. The Sharks suck. They're worse than the Blue Jackets. I don't care that they have more points than the Blue Jackets. Blue Jackets at least got Goudreau. The Sharks, what do they got, Hurdle? And who else? Logan Couture and Eric Carlson. But they're getting up there in age. Yeah, Carlson, he's going to win the North Carlson's, Trophy or be absolutely. nominated. Absolutely. No, no, he, Carlson's having a great year. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I would – the Blue Jackets are better. I agree. I think the Hawks have the worst roster. But of the three, they have the best coach. I agree. And that has allowed them to overachieve a little bit this season. The Hawks have overachieved. Their roster sucks. Their roster is worse than the Sharks, and it's, it's worse really than Columbus. Mm-hmm. Like, I look at the lines and the D pairs. I'm like, okay, Seth Jones is a really good player. Tyler Johnson is okay. You you know I hated that trade the second the Hawks made it. I and they, loved it. And we they were, were trying to win. That. Yeah. Yeah, stupid trade, horrible trade. Um, dumb, dumb, Johnson dumb. Fan. I like Tyler Johnson. He's proved his worthy to me. I like what I've seen from the guy. But it didn't make sense for this team. You're right about that. But I still like the trade. I like him. I think he's a talented athlete. Um, I, I like what I see from him. He's and if the, the Hawks are going to keep him, that's fine. Down the line. Yeah. I don't know how old the- he is. He's one of the best undrafted players I've seen. I think he's in his late twenties, early thirties now. You know, I, mean, I, I he's not going to stick around. I don't think. No, if he's that, I didn't know he's that old. But he that old, there's no dude, way he's thirty. No, dude, he was a rookie in 2015. I'm looking at yeah, so he wouldn't be thirty. Yeah, he would. I'm gonna look it up. If he's not thirty, I'll be stunned. Because he wasn't like a drafted. Holy shit. Yeah. 32. Yeah. No, he's not going to be around. Frank, 2015 was eight years ago. I know. I keep That's... forgetting that, VP. I, my, I'm still got like 2020 in my head. Like when people say this happened in 2004, I'm like, oh, that was 15 years ago. And I'm like, wait a second. No, that was 20 years ago. I, Frank, like, I, I lose track of time. Frank, in 2020, he was still 30. I understand <laughs> that, but I'm losing. T- but you get what I don't, I don't mean like I think it's 2020 because – that makes me think he's younger. I'm just using it as an example. Yeah. I, I hear stuff on TV all the time, like, oh, 2010. I'm like, oh, that wasn't that long ago. And then I realized that was 13 years ago. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Tyler Johnson was a rookie when they lost to the Hawks in the Stanley Cup final. He was – him and Andre Palat were both nominated for the Calder Trophy. And that's probably why I think he's a little bit younger, too, is because he was undrafted. He came in as a rookie as a little bit older than you normally would be as a rookie. Yeah, he was like 22, 23 as a rookie. Now, if that was Bedard, he's 18 as a rookie. <laughs> when Bedard's like- 32, he'll have an extra four years under his belt exactly. than what Johnson has. Exactly. That's another thing. I kind of forgot he was undrafted. Um, But, yeah. He's been a good player in his career. He'll probably sign with a winner, play on their third line, and we'll see. But I don't know. Maybe he goes back to the Lightning on a much cheaper deal. Um, but, yeah, the Connor Bedard sweepstakes, getting real thick, getting real thick. The team with the worst roster, there's no sympathy with lottery balls. The team with the worst season, there's no sympathy with lottery balls. It's a luck of the draw, so we'll see where Connor Bedard ends up. He has 70 goals on the season, and Frankie thinks he's the next coming of Jesus, and so do I, but he's not. I don't think he's Connor McDavid, but I think he's up there with Jack Hughes, Nathan McKinnon, and Austin Matthews, so we shall see. Frank, the top of the Metropolitan Division is – Not unlike any other division in the league. There are other divisions with big races at the top. Mm -hmm. But I think I think the implications of the top of this division mean just a little bit more because this and the central, because the central winning the division means you don't play Colorado. (laughs) Um but I think the Devils and Hurricanes would both rather play either the Islanders, Penguins, or Panthers than to play the Rangers. Um, but then again, you know, the Rangers look very beatable at times, so I'm not necessarily too worried about it, but I would like to see the Devils win the Metropolitan Division. What's your take on the top of the Metro? The Devils let me down this past week. 
last show we talked about, this was an opportunity for the New Jersey Devils to capture the Metropolitan Division with the injury of Svechnikov, right? Other guys were going to have to step up for the Hurricanes, which they haven't been doing a lot of scoring this season. So would that happen? And if it didn't, that was the Devils' opportunity to take over first place. Well, things have kind of gone sour for the Devils over the past week, and things have gone great for the Hurricanes, surprisingly. Since our last show, the Hurricanes are 2-1-0. and The Devils are 1-1-2. and They've only picked up one win. That's what hurts them here because now – Hurricanes still got a two-point lead, but they also have a two-game two game advantage in hand over the New Jersey Devils. The Devils were supposed to make up ground. Instead, they lost ground. But, I mean, that is what why I think makes the Hurricanes such a dangerous team is because they were still able to score despite some of the injuries they were faced. In those three games, they scored 10 goals. I said guys like um, Tara Vinan had a st- step up and Nikas had a step up. And what happens against the Rangers? They're trailing in the third period. Goals by Chatfield, Nosen, and Taravainen come through. Chatfield. Chatfield's not a top-tier player. It's because of injuries that occurred in the lineup. The game before that, Ajo, hat trick. A guy that doesn't necessarily need to step up. He's elite. I like Ajo. Gets a hat trick. But then Skagey scores. And Nikas, another goal gets it on the board, and that's what makes them so dangerous. They have guys that are willing to step up into that elite role when some of their elite players are out, and I think that kind of spells trouble for the Devils now. I I thought last week it's the Devils' division. I thought that was their opportunity, but after the past week, what I've seen, I think the Hurricanes, they're a much better team than people give them credit for. It's possible. I I hear what you're saying. I I look at the gauntlet of games that the Devils just went through, and they went 2-2-1 two, two and one against Carolina, Tampa Bay, and Florida. Tampa Bay three times and Florida. I would have signed up for that. I think anybody would have. If you knew those were your next five games, any team in the league, even the Bruins, any team in the league has three with Tampa, one with Carolina, one with Florida. Yeah, you'd want better than that, of course. You'd want undefeated. You'd want 5-0-0. But anyone in the league would sign up for two, two and one in that stretch. That's what the Devils did. Uh, they lost one ground of point because of the wild game yesterday. And Tara, yeah, too. and Carolina almost freaking lost to Philly. They scored a goal with zero point three seconds left on the clock to force yep. overtime, and then won it in overtime. So that's a bit of bad luck by the Devils. But now the tables are going to flip a little bit. The Devils have Ottawa and Buffalo coming up here. Two good teams. But it ain't Tampa Bay and Carolina and Florida. It's just not. And Carolina has to go try and do that again against the Rangers. You know, see if you can keep them down a second game in a row. And then on Saturday, they have the Toronto Maple Leafs, who could easily do the Devils a favor while the Devils are playing Ottawa. And then on Sunday for the Carolina Hurricanes, the Boston Bruins. That's tough. So their three next games are the Bruins, Maple Leafs, and Rangers. The Devils' next three games are Buffalo, Ottawa, and the Islanders. Three bubble teams. Good. You know, they're not playing the Hawks. Well, they are soon. Um, But they're not playing freaking San Jose. They're not playing – but they're playing, you know, teams that they should be able to get points against. So I think it's right there with the most compelling top of the division in the NHL but I really like the race in the central division because the wild and stars are top with 90 points and the Colorado avalanche are a couple behind, but the winner of that division doesn't have to play Colorado. And I think that's big. I do think that's big. I completely agree. I think we have a lot of great races here down the stretch. And this is some of my favorite time of the year when it comes to the hockey season, because these games are almost as meaningful and competitive as playoff games. So I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Frank, your boy, your favorite player in the NHL, Alexander (laughs) Ovechkin, scored his 40th goal of the season right in your face yesterday. It's okay. And that is now – he is now on 13 40-goal seasons. That passes Wayne Gretzky – First of a couple things he's going to pass Wayne Gretzky in. 
for the most 40 goal seasons in the Don't history of the NHL. <laughs> the most 40 goal seasons in the history of the NHL. If he scores 10 more over the final 10 games, he'll pass Wayne Gretzky and Mike Bossy for the most ever 50 goal seasons with 10. And he has already tied Mike Gartner for the most 30 goal seasons with 17. If he does it again next year, he will break that record. The goal was the eight, 120th of his NHL career. He needs 74 more to tie the record and 75 more to break it. He will probably, as I said, come just short of 50 this season. He has already broken your prediction of eclipsing 40. And Alexander Ovechkin is just going to be in your nightmares. And I told you that you have till the end of the season to concede on the team. You have till the end of the season. I don't know what you're going to do if the final day, the, the playoffs start on a Monday this year. So our final show, you know, our our final show is going to be a couple days before the regular season yep. ends and we'll already be in the playoffs by the following show. I kind of liked it before when they started on a Wednesday and we had that show right before. Maybe we'll have a special Monday show that week. Actually, that'd be kind of fun. Whatever, yeah. I, I would I would totally do that and then still do the typical show on Wednesday. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens there. But, man, Alexander the Great, 74 more to go. You figure he gets probably around 40, 43 again next year. He'll be about 30 shy of the great one, and he'll probably do it in about March of 2025. Honest prediction there. Uh, maybe February, March, April of 2025. And then he ain't going to retire. He's still going to have another year left on his contract. He's probably going to stay and try and reach a thousand. Uh, that's what I would do. So the great one, Frank, go ahead. I got a new prediction for him. He's going to get 44 goals this season. That'd he's going to, he's going to finish with 44 goals this season. And listen, Ovechkin, amazing player. Like I said, I got nothing against him. He's one of the most consistent players in NHL history. Always staying consistent, getting those forty goal seasons, breaking Gretzky's 12 40 goal seasons. Um, and what I thought was pretty interesting is there's only been five years of his career where he hasn't gotten forty goals, which is unbelievable because I'm pretty sure that's taking into account the shortened season for COVID and the shortened lockout season in 2013. So two shortened seasons in his career. So he's three only technically. Are you t- the one all the way back? There are two COVID seasons. Oh, yeah. There's the, they didn't play a full 82. They didn't play a full 82, no. any of the two. And he no. came came up just short of 50 in both of them. But he did get 40 in the one, right? He probably got to 40 in the first COVID season. Yeah. It was paused yeah. late. So there were only two shortened seasons where he didn't get it. Oh, you're talking 40. I apologize. 40, I thought 40. you were talking 50. Thought, sorry, no, no, no. Sorry. We're two 40 goal seasons where he didn't get it. So there's only three full regular seasons where he didn't score 40, which is just unbelievable. It just shows the consistency that this man has. Um, I like that he's at an even 820 right now. I like crisp numbers. He's got re reached 40 goal and he's at 820, which I, th- I don't know. It's just a little thing I thought I'd say. It has nothing. There's no reason why I said it. I just I like it. 44 goals is my prediction he's going to end the year on. We'll see if I'm right. There's no way he gets 10 and 10. I had no way. No way. I'm not making that my prediction by any means, but to say no way. No shot. I mean, if he has a hat trick tomorrow, then I would say like. Then there's a, then there's a chance, but I'm not banking on him getting a hat trick either. You go two games without scoring, then you need to bank on a hat trick. No, but you know what I think is working in his favor right now? Washington sucks. They're so bad now. They could they, make the playoffs. They could, but I've been watching them lately, and they they just give up chance after. So if you're Ovechkin, you're like, I fucking score goals. I've played more hockey than most people in the last. Only the Lightning have played more hockey than me in the last five years. But they're not out of it. They and that's another thing. It. That's another thing that'll work in his favor. Missing the playoffs. That's an extra two months to recover the body. You know, nicked up a little bit this season, more than a little bit. Um, You pointed out three years of non-40 goals, and two of them were either COVID or lockout. No, there were five. 
that were non forty goals. Oh, but only three full eighty two game seasons with non forty goals. Yeah, one five of them... five, but two shortened seasons. Yeah, he's only had one down year in his career, in my opinion, where he just straight up didn't play well. And it was the 13-14 season when Washington didn't even make the playoffs. It was like people were questioning if they were going to trade him and whatnot. Like, I vividly remember that. That's his only ever down year, and he still had 32 goals. Like, if your down year is a 32-goal campaign, you know, sign me up. <laughs> um, oh, I'd, I'd love if he found a way to get 50. I think Stamkos was in a similar situation where he needed like seven and seven and he got it when he was going for 60 that one year and he needed a hat trick in the final game of the season and he got it. Sometimes, sometimes motivated players, the, the goal being his credited to him yesterday was a tad bit lucky because I don't know if you watched it. It's on my Twitter. He threw it in front of the net to Strom and it bounced off the defender and went in. Mm -hmm. But I, when, when you, you know, Wayne Gretzky had a couple of those, too. You know, if you're going to score 900 goals, a couple of them are going to bounce in off some asses or some sticks or some empty nets. But um, a couple weeks ago, no, it was probably longer than a couple weeks ago. Now, you're going to remember it. LeBron James broke Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's yeah. all-time points record. And the Lakers were getting creamed. And they paused the game. And there were people <laughs> shitting on it. Like, how could they have such a big celebration when the Lakers suck and they're getting creamed and what are we doing? I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, there are hockey people saying this. The Capitals are going to get fucking mode in the game that Ovechkin breaks Wayne Gretzky's goal record. If they're playing the Devils or something, the Devils are going to be up 7-1 to one and the one goal is going to be 895. You don't think we're going to pause everything we're doing in that game. Both benches are going to clear and shake the man's hand. Wayne Gretzky is going to be in the building. And he'll come down and shake Wayne's hand. Gary Bettman's going to present them with something. The hockey game's going to go on an hour pause the second it happens. Unless it's an empty netter, then you might as well kill the 50 seconds and then do it. But, oh, I, I hated people saying that because the same thing is coming for the NHL in a couple years. And I'll tell you what, I cannot wait. I also can, though. I'm going to enjoy the ride because once it happens, then you never know how long his career goes from there. Does he go for a 1,000? Does he try to pursue one more cup with another team? Because Washington, man. Oh, wouldn't that be sick if they won the lottery, though, and then Bedard can – Bedard will make them 50 again. You know, <laughs> Bedard will help, help, out, get out help him pump out a, a – Don't even put that bomb. in the atmosphere. Oh, I would love it. You're insane. I would absolutely love it. Get Bedard to Washington. A thousand goals for Ovi. Let's go. Frank. I got nothing to say. You have until you have until the end of the year to concede to me. Otherwise, that episode after will be a 100th episode type vibe. Except <laughs> instead of bringing people in to like talk nicely about us. We're going to bring people in to question how could you possibly doubt the great eight? We'll see. If he doesn't get to 44. You didn't think he'd get to 40. And don't think, don't think I don't have number five from the St. Louis Cardinals in the back of my head with this whole predicting thing that oh, you're doing. Poo. Poo he you. was about 80 out. He was about 80 out. I remember your driveway, summer, hot day, just fun, fun day at the Mueller's. Shitting on Albert Pujols, that absolute fucking legend. Oh, my God. He had a great second half of the season. He really did. He really did. I mean, if he kept on pace from the first half of the season, you don't blame me for my take. He was like, he was not utilized in the first half of the season like he no. was in the second half. No, but he was still with the Angels when we started the whole poo holes thing. Was he? Yeah, and then he got traded to the Dodgers, finished the season with them. And was that mid-season he got traded? To the Dodgers. Yeah. In 2021. Yeah. And that's when the whole Vinny Frankie poo holes debate started. And then he came into this last year needing, what, 21? Something like that. And the just first the, half was just horrid. He had like eight. I don't even know if he had that much. It was like so bad. 
Oh no, maybe at seven, and he needed fourteen, right? Yeah, something like that. He needed like to double his production of the first half, and I'm like, there's just no way. Yeah, but they well, used him more. Yeah, you just got to play him. He's still Albert Pujols. You throw one high and tight, he's hitting it to Pluto. Um, so Otho Vechkin, the great eight. Can't wait. So great. When does Washington play next? Let's take tomorrow. A quick, I think. Take a quick peek. The Washington Capitals. Oh, is it tomorrow? They play the Chicago Blah. Yeah. Oh, remember what happened last time he played them? <laughs> Little Hattie. Oh, he had a hat trick. Oh. Yeah, but he, there was reason for him to get a hat trick. There's reason for him to There's get a hat no trick. Reason. Now he's got no... he's got the number five on his mind with a nice no, little zero you're not, at the end of it. You're not motivated. Like he has no reason to get like if he was ten away from sixty like Stam, because that's a different story. But he has no reason to want to get to fifty. Uh going into next season, needing sixty four to break Gretzky is get a little bit different than needing seventy four. Get out. <laughs> If he hits four more, he'll have in a- his a- eyes and your eyes. He's going to get it regardless. So why, like, make it strenuous on yourself to go all out for an extra ten this year? No, nah, he yeah. has no motivation. Yeah, why? I mean, I don't. No, I I get that point. I I think, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this year was a tough year for him. Lost his dad. Uh, little little nicked up. They've played a lot of hockey, Washington. I hope they don't make the playoffs. I want to see Ovi go home and rest the bod, man. Go home and rest the bod. Come out next year. You score anywhere from 35 to 40 next year. You'll be about 35 to 40 out because you're getting 10 more this year. So you'll be about 35 to 40 out. (laughs) I've played this Ovechkin supporting role well. You got to give me that. I've played the pro Ovi role well. You're a good advocate. (laughs) Everybody should want me on their side. Um, Frank, this Pittsburgh, Florida race, it's getting intense. Pittsburgh sucks. You know, we, we haven't flip flopped and I don't know if I've ever seen it happen because I've listened to hockey podcasts for like 10 years now. I don't know if I've ever heard a group of people flip on a team more in one particular season. We had the penguins dead and dry early. Then we were like, you know, this team, they got Crosby and Malkin. They're all producing. Latang having a good year, this and that. They, 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 they could be a cup contender if they make a trade or two. Oh, they lost five in a row again. This Pittsburgh team stinks. Oh, wait a minute. They, they are a team that can compete each and every day. Now they stink. We flip-flopped on them so much this year. I want to say they suck and shit on them and call them dead, and then they'll win five in a row, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, Florida has been really hot since the calendar year flipped. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Kachuk has the second most points in the NHL since January 1st. You know what alien is the only one that has more than him. Um, I like this race, though. It's a lot different than last year in the Eastern Conference. Absolutely. Before we do anything, we got another message from Travis that is like very heartfelt and very nice. It says, I just want to say thank you for all the great content. Although I can't engage in chat, I work alone. So these shows really help me through the day. That's great to hear. Like, if we could put a smile on your face, you enjoy the content that we're creating, and we could just give you that little extra thing you look forward to every day, that that makes me very happy to to hear. And that's ultimately why we do these shows. I mean, VP, I mean, we're, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I strive to make content every single day. And it's for people to enjoy. That's the that, that message is that's very nice. I, I yeah. really like that message. We put a lot of work into it, so I appreciate that there are people out there that enjoy it as much as we do. So thank you, Travis. I hope your work day goes just a little bit smoother and puts one little extra smile on your face than you would have had had we not been here. So absolutely, thank you for listening. absolutely, and thank you, Travis, um, for just showing up all the time to all of our shows. It really means a lot to us. We love having you here in the chat. 100%. South Burbs Hitman Monday, season debut part two. So, see you there. But back to Pittsburgh and Florida. Florida. Not right Washington. Here. What? Not Washington. They're dead. I I put the D word on them. I have not put the D word. I, I use the D word. Buffalo has a better chance, and they're no, lower. No, I use the D word very 
not loosely tight, I guess you would say. They're on, I like using the word life support. They're on life support. They're not dead because you just never know. What are they? I don't have their points. I have Pittsburgh. They have, they're like two points out, right? They they have 74 points, and they have 72 games played. They have Oh, oh yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, they're dead. I, I agree. I'm thinking of we're going to talk about a different team, I think. We're going to talk about a different team that I think is on – life support but possible yeah i know who you're talking about they're in the western conference yeah they're in the western i okay i think i think buffalo has a better chance i got my i do forget about buffalo i want to like they have 70 games played and 72 points right they're They're six points behind pittsburgh they're the same number of games they got a better chance than washington no i think i think they're both dead but i think they got a better chance than washington that's fair okay Um, that's fair Florida, 79 points, 71 games, uh, 71 games played. Pittsburgh, a point behind at 78 points, but they they have an extra game in hand. Ever since we talked about their um, meltdown against Montreal from last Tuesday on last Wednesday's show, they've lost, they've gone downhill ever since that day. They've lost four in a row without even sniffing a point. Everything went downhill after that. And on the flip side, Florida's been one of the hottest teams in the league. They're three one and zero since our last show, and they had a seven game point streak, seven games with at least a point, and that was heartbreaking to come to an end against Philadelphia, a team that you need to focus on. You need to be up for that game. That's a team you have to beat when you're in a race for the last playoff spot, and it's separated by one point. You got to beat the Philadelphias of the league. You got to beat the Arizonas, the Columbus Blue Jackets of the league. Those are the teams you got to beat. And while their streak wasn't going to last forever, they weren't going to, they had a seven game point streak or uh, seven games with at least a point. It's not going to last forever. It's going to come to an end. It's probably going to come to an end against a stinky team, too. You got to try. It's like they didn't even try in that game. They lost six to three. It was, it was, pathetic to see you win that game you got a three-point lead and the game in hand doesn't even matter against pittsburgh but i keep flipping on them i really do right now i'm gonna say florida's gonna get in just because they're hotter and if pittsburgh could get their act together then maybe it's a little bit of a different story but i don't know florida's one of the hottest teams in the nhl right now so it's hard it's hard to go against them i'm gonna say florida takes wild card spot number two in the east I personally, and I didn't write this down because I didn't know I didn't want to like be influencing. I don't think Florida should be worried at all. I, I think they could become the seventh seed. If you remember correctly, I had Florida in the playoffs. I thought they'd be a little Me bit too. better, but I did have them in the playoffs. So. Yeah. Me too. Uh, Florida's a seventh seed. Wow. I think it becomes between the Islanders and Penguins. Wow. So by. By default, I, I'm kind of saying the Penguins are dead because they're four points behind the Islanders. Like, I, I just I can't see it. I, I'm having a hard time seeing it right now. I, I watched them play the Devils, and the Devils were winning 2 nothing with 10 minutes left in the third. And they scored two goals in three minutes. They're not that good defensively, Florida. You'll get your chances mm-hmm. against them. But they have a quick strike offense. Quick, you saw it when they played the Hawks. They kept going down, and they tie it, and they put a bunch of shots on goal, and they lead the league in shots for. It's unbelievable what they can do, and they could go on a little three minute run. Listen, the Devils can skate with them. I think they're better than the Panthers, and they lost to them in that one game because they had a bad three minute stretch on the road, especially. But it would have been really nice to take that game, but Florida showed to me in that game how good they actually are. So I'm liking Florida right now. Um, Tom says couldn't join until 2.50, but he's here now. Hello. Good to have you, Tom. Of course. Another avid viewer. Absolutely. Speaking of avid viewers, the Jets have been avid viewers <laughs> of failure. They have five wins since the All-Star break, and I know they were the team you were referring to on life support. Um, no, no, they're not. No. Oh, well, we'll they are. We'll get to them. The Jets are on life support. The only difference is they're on the kind of life support where like they're still breathing because they're above the playoff line. 
but this was a team that has lost a 10 point differential. Like they were right there with Dallas and Minnesota. And now they're 17 points behind them because oh, of I, how bad they've been. I still think they're okay. I still think they're okay. They're a little more than life support. They're having trouble breathing, but they're breathing. They're not, they don't need the machine for life support. They don't need an oxygen machine to keep them breathing yet. They're not a lock to make the playoffs. The team I'm referring to, who's on life support, is Nashville. Let's not forget about Nashville. They're only five points behind, but they got three games in hand, VP. That's a ton of games. That's life support, where they still have an outside chance. Do I think they're going to win those three games in hand? Probably not, but if they do, they make up that ground. I think Nashville's an underdog here to get in. I really do. I like the way they've been playing lately. And right now, Jets and uh, Calgary, Jets lead, lead Calgary by four points. They got the same amount of games in hand. I think they're okay there, but let's not forget about Nashville. Everybody's talking about the Jets-Calgary race, but I truly believe Nashville has that chance to you know, make a little surprise and really surprise a lot of people here. The problem with the Jets is, I mean, they just have a lack of scoring from, the, from their big guns. Let's take a look back at this past week for them, right? All right. They got a 2-1 win over Arizona, a game that they were trailing going to the third period, and they get goals by Ehlers and Lowry, right? Okay. Pull out the win. Great. You didn't need to score a lot of goals. Arizona only scored one. But you still, none of their big guns came out. Then Sunday versus St. Louis, they got shut out. Nobody decided to show up in that game. Game before that against Nashville. Goals by Pionk, Lowry, and Ehlers again. Lowry and Ehlers back on the board. Game before that, they get shut out by the Boston Bruins. That's two shutouts in four games. Not to mention there are only two goals against Arizona, a team that you should really kind of dominate. What happened to Shifley? What happened to Kyle Connor? What happened to Morrissey? What happened to these guys? They're just not scoring lately, and that's why their 10-point lead dissipated. I mean, they're nowhere to be seen. What will really be interesting is their game against Anaheim tomorrow. That's a game you don't want to win two to one. You need to win five to three or five to two. You need to make a statement. And I tell you what, if they may, if even if they squeak out a win two to one, that's going to spell trouble for them. It really is. I agree. They're in trouble. Looking at Nashville's schedule, they have the odd thing that the NHL has done a couple times this year where they put teams against each other in the same building two games in a row. They have Seattle in Seattle on the 23rd and 25th, so Thursday and Saturday. That's weird. And then, then they got Toronto on Sunday. Then the following week they have the Bruins, the Penguins, and the Blues. So it's not necessarily easy does it for the Nashville Predators. They have a hard test ahead of them, but – you know, they have a chance to go into the playoffs feeling good about themselves, so we'll see how they handle it. They end the season at home against the Minnesota Wild and the Colorado Avalanche, probably the two best teams in the Central Division, or two of the three best teams in the Central Division. You could debate between the three of them, the two of them with Dallas. But, yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, I think they make the playoffs. They're cooked come playoffs, though. Who? The Jets. Oh, yeah. Cook. Yeah. This was the Predator schedule I was just naming. Oh, I thought that was the Jets schedule. No. The Jets have Anaheim. Yeah, but you said the last two games of the season. The last two games of the season. I for, thought I, that was for the Jets. I was going Nashville because Nashville is right no. there threatening with the. I think um, they're a threat. They Don't are a threat. Nashville. No. Um,. And then, Frank, last thing for the first period, uh, Nikita Kucherov is the latest player in the NHL to have 100 points. He went a couple years without doing it because of injury and whatnot. Happy to see Kucherov back in the 100-point mix. This is the player that he is when he's fully healthy. Do you want to know something funny? The Lightning has had six times a player has gotten 100 points, and three of those times are Nikita Kucherov. <laughs> Half of the times that a player has gotten to 100 points is because of Nikita Kucherov. And he also holds the record for the most points by a Tampa Bay Lightning's player for that one year. He had like, what, 124, 128? I don't remember. 128. It was unbelievable. He holds the record. Some of the other guys that you'll know very well, Vincent LeCavalier, 
Stamkos and Marty St. Louis were all or other the three other players who have gotten past the century mark. But I mean, this is what makes the Lightning so dangerous. Our guys like Nikita Kucherov, they're so talented. You stress it enough that they got a, a Hall of Famer at every position. So come playoff time, even if they're not a one seed or a two seed, they're always dangerous because of the talent that they had. They don't need to have the best record. No, not at all. And it's just, this is what makes them so dangerous. We're targeting a first round matchup between the Loafs and the Lightning. Oh, I can't wait. Another the first round exit by the yeah. Toronto Maple Leafs. I didn't want to write it down and so you can shit on the Leafs all episode, but the Lightning have been brutal lately. I'm not even right. slightly scared for the right. Leafs. But the it's Leafs, a different play. The playoffs are a different Lightning team. And they just agree to that. They, yeah, but they just don't look the same. They're tired. They're going to get bounced in the first round with ease this year. Um, yeah, that's period number one. Frankie, lengthy. Frankie will – yeah, it was a lengthy one. <laughs> Frankie will die on all his hills that he built himself on in period number one, and we will get to a bit of big NHL news combined with some fun little, you know, opinion discussion in period number two. <laughs> You're not going to fool me. I saw your hand twitch. <laughs> you messed up. Uh, my, I messed up. I shouldn't have did that. I shouldn't have included the hand because I think I could. That's a little bit better, but your hand was like moved a little bit. <laughs> See, that's pretty good. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I could do it. I, I know I could do it. Um, I got Joey one time. I remember. Nailed wasn't, it, wasn't it when we were around? I remember you doing that because I think Joey said like, "Oh, I think Vinny lost connection or <laughs> something like that." I think I remember that. It was early on. Sometimes it's hard not to bust out laughing though when someone's <laughs> like, "Oh, I think they lost connection with their Walmart." You could be like, you could be like one of those guys that, um, not mine. Who are the guys like that pretend to be statues? They're like all gold or silver. You see them in like, yeah, gold. yeah. I don't know I, what they're called. They're I not mine. Do that. I couldn't do that. Because people, like, get in your face and, like, try to make you laugh, and they're just stone cold. Yeah, someone would, like, fart, and I would just be like. (laughs) (laughs) Tom would fart. and Yeah, he'd come up to me and ask me to pull his finger. (laughs) I was going to say that. (laughs) Frank. Uh, Fanatics has taken over the National Hockey League starting in a couple years. They will be the official jersey manufacturer of on-ice jerseys and fan-authentic jerseys. Adidas was the primary creator of on-ice NHL jerseys and a fair amount of the products that came out. Um, What's your take? Could be bad. It could be. I mean, not a lot of people like the Fanatics wear. Some people don't like the quality of it. And at the end of the day, Adidas is an overall better brand than Fanatics. Um, However, I always am under the impression like, Let's just wait and see how it goes. I mean, I think if Fanatics is in now, Fanatics got a lot of pressure. They're in a bigger role now. They got a whole entire um, sports league that they have to worry about. So maybe that'll light a fire under their ass and say, all right, we got to come out with a little bit better quality because we're creating it for the entire league. It is a 10 year deal. Whether you like it or not, it's going to be the case for the next decade. Um, I'm not too happy about it because I agree with some of the people saying like the quality is not as good as Adidas, which it's not. I've loved what Adidas has come out with, but I'm not going to completely shit on the idea until I see what happens, because I do think fanatics in a bigger role, they might surprise a lot of people. They might get their act together, right? Because they didn't have the pressure that they do in the past that they do now. So I'm going to wait to, to completely disregard the idea, not, too fond of it, but I think there is potential for Fanatics to surprise. No team in any pro sport in any league has ever donned Fanatics brand on the playing surface yet. Mm-hmm. And this, the NHL will be the first ones. Um, I got some insight that will calm down some people who are pissed off about it. Yeah, I'm at not first, pissed off about it. At first, I was annoyed because the quality of the Fanatics brand and stuff isn't quite the same as the No, Indeed. not at all. There's a reason. Fanatics, as the secondary creator of NHL products in the last, since Adidas took over, there's a price limit 
they can spend, not being the primary. They can't charge more than X amount of dollars for certain items. That naturally lowers the quality. They can't sell $40 hats like Adidas can. They can't sell $70 sweatshirts like Adidas can. They have to cap them off, you know, if it's 30 bucks or 20 bucks, whatever it is. That will naturally lower the quality. That will not be the case anymore. They will be allowed to sell $300 jerseys. So they will feel, in my opinion, like $300 jerseys. That's my prediction. Yeah, you're, you're kind of like helping out my point of what I said. I think in a bigger role, they'll have like better opportunities to make nicer things. Basically is what I said in a yeah. short version. They'll simply be allowed to make better quality because things are all going to be allowed to be charged for more money. That's why nobody likes can. nobody likes to spend money, but then when stuff is shit quality, they complain. Oh, so yeah. like, you never want to go cheap. No. Buy cheap, buy twice. That's the saying. Yes. 100%. So it I don't think it's going to end up being all that big of a deal. The only thing that worries me is like the designs of things. Like don't change the devil's jersey. Don't you know, keep it cool. Keep it cool. I have a Fanatics Wild jersey because they've been doing the uh, the premiers and then mm-hmm. it's the Authentics. The premiers are pretty good. I have a Premier Wild jersey. They're comfy. The logos fold. They're easy to store and whatnot. They're not, you know, they're, they're like good party hockey jerseys. So probably will continue buying those. They're going to keep making the same ones in addition to the, the big boys that they'll be making now too. Mm-hmm. Uh, going to be a minute before we see any like changes in designs because i think they're keeping the adidas base model for homes and roads for the first two years but it's been a good run for adidas i've liked the addy zeros Mm -hmm. Uh, those retros are really cool we'll see what fanatics is able to come up with i'm sure they'll do something um it's not going to be bland by any means so it got me thinking about jerseys though friend okay what are your five favorite home jerseys in the nhl all right, so there's no bias here. Seriously, I'm not saying that to be funny. There's no bias here. <laughs> but it is kind of funny. But I think the Blackhawks are one of my favorite five. I love the Indian head. And I, that is like a popular opinion, not by me. But oh, no, I know, I know. Blackhawks home jersey. I love, and they really like the Blackhawks white jerseys too. I, I love the, um, but we'll, we'll talk about that. I, the home jersey, I love the red Blackhawks jersey. It's always been a fan of mine. When I was growing up and people asked me, do you want – what jersey you want if somebody's buying a jersey for me? They always, like, enticed me to go for the white jersey. Everybody loved the white jersey. I said, no, nah, I want the home red. I've always loved the home red. That's one of them. Another part of my – do you want me to go – I don't really have an order. No, yeah, just say your it's five just favorites. my top five. Another one of my top five, so my second jersey – uh, I love the Bruins jersey. I love the black and yellow and the spoked B. It's just I, I loved everything about it. Um, it's just such a clean jersey. Um, yeah, I really don't have anything else to say, but I just love the clean cleanliness of it. I love Vegas's jersey. Um, I love the logo. I think they used a great color combination. Um, I love the color gold in a jersey, and when you mesh it with some black, it looks very, very clean. <sighs> This is where it gets tough because I'm not a jersey hater, really, by any means. There are some jerseys that I think are disgusting that I would never buy, but that usually are like some alternates of certain jerseys. But when it comes to jerseys, I would buy basically any style of jersey. I'm not really a hater. And you could ask me in a week what my five favorite jerseys are, and they may change just based on the given day. But this, this is tough. I'm going to go with the Dallas Stars. I like the victory green. I like the bright green. There's not many jerseys in the NHL when you have that bright green jersey like the victory green. I love it. Um, I'll go with the Dallas Stars. And then this last one was between two. (sighs) Man. I'm going to go with the New York Rangers. I like the red, white, and blue. I like the slanted diagonal lettering of the Rangers. I love the blue homes. It was between that or the lightning. I really like the lightning jerseys too, but it's like 
I would buy a Lightning jersey, and it and when I do, and I think I will have one in my lifetime, it will be their home jersey. But it just it doesn't have to get on this list. It's just at the end of the day, it's just a blue jersey with some white in it. It just doesn't have that Rangers S to it. And the thing that bothers me about the Rangers jersey that I, I really don't like about their homes is that 3D lettering on the back and the 3D or the 3D numbers. That kind of bothers me. But the ov- overall design of it is kind of cool. I like the color scheme, red, white, and blue. And I, I just like the way the front of it looked. So those are my five Blackhawks, Bruins, Vegas, Rangers, Stars. Very good list. It's not the list I was expecting to hear from you, but it's a very good list. I knew the Hawks would be on it. Everyone likes the Blackhawks jersey. I included it on mine. You know, it's a classic NHL jersey. I would change the stripes on the bottom a little bit now. I th- I would like to see it straight red. The Blackhawks have a very good catalog of jerseys. There's only one I hate. Is it this year's reverse retro? Oh, I would never even consider buying it, I don't think. Oh, I like it. Oh. Really? See, I'm not biased. I I call a spade a spade. I don't yeah. like it. Just because they're my favorite. Oh, I can't stand it. I kind of liked it, and I saw it in person. It gives me chills. I liked it. I don't know. I like it. I, and Detroit, too. They're the, basically the same thing. I like it. I know. Uh, my favorite home jersey of all time in the NHL. It's probably my favorite jersey in sports. It's a very nice I, one. I it's wore it for nice a re- I wore this shirt on this show today for a reason, knowing we'd be talking about this. Um, the Detroit Red Wings home jersey is my favorite jersey in the NHL. It's very similar to the Hawks, and it's just a classic red jersey with my favorite logo in all of sports on the crest. And it's the winged wheel. Trust um, me, I thought about them. Yeah, it's it's just a sick jersey. Absolutely so cool. I love the font of their names on the back. The numbers are cool. It just makes me think of hockey. Like few other logos make me think of cities or teams or players. The Red Wings logo just makes me think of hockey. And that's what I like most about it for me. And, you know, these lists are biased hundred percent and um, breaking news. Frankie and I both included our favorite teams on our favorite home jerseys. <laughs> like it's not that difficult to understand why um, I also put the Chicago Blackhawks. So I'm in agreement with you on that. The Indian head on the red jersey, it's just – it's classic. It's its really good. They do a good job. I really like the Toronto Maple Leafs jersey, the blue jersey with the new Leafs logo. If they had the old Leafs logo, like the Phil Kessel, JVR, Nazem Kadri, I would not include it. Hated it. Didn't love it at all. This new Leafs logo is outstanding. It's just a perfect Maple Leaf logo, and I love the blue jerseys. Mm-hmm. Um, really cool. I have the Boston Bruins. The black jersey with the gold trim and the spoked B. Classic. Hockey. Original six. Great stuff. Um, Then I put the New Jersey Devils. I really like the red jersey with the black on top. And, you know, the way the names are on it, it's just, it's the Devils. And the logo to me is unbelievable. That logo means a lot to me. I really like their home jerseys a lot. Um, red is my favorite color. It's just, it's the devils. I will throw an honorable mention. The team I thought of was the Montreal Canadians. Uh, I thought, you know, their, their jerseys are really cool and they're old and, you know, so that's my honorable mention there, but those are my top five, Detroit, Toronto, Boston, Chicago, and New Jersey. See, I love a lot of those jerseys you named too. It's like, it's hard. It's a great Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. It's just hard to choose five now. For the road, what are your top five road jerseys? Um, like I said, I think they have one of the best catalogs in the league. I, I got to stick with the White Hawks, too. I love the White Hawks jersey as well. Uh, I, it's very clean. When it comes to road jerseys, there's not a ton you could do, but there is a major difference. Just because they're white, there's, I mean, it, it just the, play, the, the logo with the white, it's just a whole different ballgame, which is why I included the Red Wings for – my road jerseys. I really love the way that Red Wings logo looks on a white jersey. Um, it might be one of the few where if I was buying a jersey, I might consider getting the whites over the homes um, because it's such a clean logo. And just that clean logo on a clean white jersey, I love the way it looks. So Red Wings are definitely on my list as well. You're probably not going to – you're not going to probably get some of these that I'm thinking. But I also like the Jets, the Jets road whites. I love the Jet logo. Once again, that type of logo on a white jersey to me really works well. There's some colors in there. You got the red, you got the blue, but ultimately it's a white jersey. Um, 
I like it a lot. I like the Seattle Kraken. Um, I like their uh, road jerseys a lot as well. Not too fond of their home jerseys because I'm more of a light blue instead of that kind of dark blue. But nonetheless, I love the Seattle Kraken logo with the little octopus in the eye, the Kraken. It looks great on white. And then finally, the Los Angeles Kings. Man, I really like their homes too, but something about the black and white. But the black logo becomes more prominent on an all-white jersey, which is why I included the Los Angeles Kings. So there you go. Blackhawks, Red Wings, Krakens, Jets, Kings. It's a very good list. I have one issue. I love the Jets road jerseys, but there's something about them that keeps them off my list because I thought about it. And it's the same thing that keeps a team like Columbus and Colorado off my road list jerseys too. I like when the shoulder pattern color stops at the end of the shoulder blade. These teams have it come all the way down the arm, and I hate it. It looks so bad. It looks so bad. And the Jets are one of the teams that have it. So does Columbus and Colorado. And I say, if Columbus wins Bedard, they better rebrand. I want to see new everything from them because um, I think that's a good excuse to do it. But, you know, I that keeps those off for me. But I do think the Jets, I did want to give an honorable mention to the Jets. Um, and I'll give an honorable mention to the Wings, too, just because the, the logo is my favorite. And I, I do like it on the white jersey as well. But outside of them and the Toronto Maple Leafs, who I did include, on my favorite road jersey list, the Toronto Maple Leafs blue logo on the white jersey. It pops. I love it. Um, though, no, outside of the Leafs, nobody from my home list made my road list. Wow. I don't like the Blackhawks road jerseys. And I'll really? Tell you why. Yeah, no. Because the Indian, they got to find a, the Indian head doesn't pop on the white jersey to me. It looks a lot more plain and like. I don't know. It just, it's not as a popping. I don't know if they should put red on their shoulder blades or what, but it's just a plain white jersey with black stripes on the bottom with the Indian head on the middle. It does, it just has nothing. It's, there's no flair on it for me. It's, it's just not my favorite road jersey. And I love the home jersey. I'm not poo pooing the team no, right. by any means or having, you. you know, any kind of anti hawk bias or anything like that. Like, I just don't love their road jerseys. I know I'm in the minority on that. It's just, my thought, I don't really love any of the original six teams jerseys. I like the wings because of the logo, but I think there's so many more they can, so much more they could do with it. That's why it's an honorable mention and not on the list. Uh, and then I do like the Leafs just because I think white and blue is a little bit different than everything else. Uh, the rest of the original six, I can give or take their road jerseys for a variety of reasons. Um, I think the newer teams do the roads a little bit better, and that's why I included the Minnesota Wild. I think the Minnesota Wild's road jerseys, they were kind of the first to start making their road jerseys with this style because they had the thing down their arm as well, like the Jets and Columbus and Colorado. They were the first to get rid of it and just keep the color green on their shoulder blade, and that's it. And I love that. And the logo's crisp. The stripes are all perfect. The colors mesh well. Um, it's probably my favorite road jersey in the NHL. Of any wow. Team. Um, I included the San Jose Sharks. I would not have included the San Jose Sharks anything before this year. This year with their new road jerseys with a different logo, with a different color, the different type of teal, and just the way that the the white is on the jersey, the Sharks have asserted themselves onto my top five road jerseys this season. I included the Seattle Kraken. I think the Kraken's road jerseys are unbelievable. They are are so cool. I think I will get (laughs) <laughs> a road Kraken jersey before a home one. Absolutely, 100%. So it would just be cool for parties and stuff. Like, it's a good conversation piece. And to, and I would get the road over the home. I truly believe that. I don't know what player yet, but I do plan on getting a Kraken jersey sometime soon. I really want one. So it'll be a road one. I like those better. And then to round out my top five is the Los Angeles Kings. I really – and I like their home jerseys. They're fine. I think they could do a little bit more. But it's like the stripes and stuff that bug me on the home one. But the road one is just a perfect white jersey with that perfect Kings logo in black slapped right in the center. I think the Kings do a great – whenever the Kings are on the road, I look at those and I go – I think about it. I'm like, I I could buy one of those at any time. So that's my list of road jerseys, Minnesota, San Jose, Seattle, Los Angeles, and Toronto. Wow. So we we got a couple similar. We I mean, cool, 
cool jerseys are cool jerseys, man. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Um, there are a couple borderline ones that people can debate on, and everybody has preferences on certain things. Like, I know my color down the arm thing is like a Vinny thing, but, you know, and it is what it is. So, Frank, what about your favorite alternate jerseys that are active in the NHL right now? This is going to be fun This is because I don't think you would – you wouldn't even probably guess half. Probably um, not. I don't think. This is I, – I went, like, all over the place because I, I pulled up a list of all of them. I wanted to see them, like, all together, and then I was able to pick and choose which ones I like the best. I'm going st- to – I hope I got some of these right. I'm pretty sure I do. Um, but I'm going to start off with the Carolina Hurricanes. I love their like war flag that they got going on with the hockey stick as the pole. I just think that is so unique. It is so cool, and it just makes you want to go into battle. When I see those jerseys, it's like you're going into war. I love those jerseys. I'd consider getting that over a regular Carolina Hurricanes jersey um, if I were to get one. Second, Vegas Golden Knights, I love the gold jerseys. I think they're so cool. And I don't know if I'm in the minority when I say that because I think a lot of people don't really like the gold. But I, I you might think, be, but not from me. I like them too. I think they're so good looking. Like I said, the gold, the color scheme that the Vegas Golden Knights has obviously matches with Vegas, and that's why they went with those colors. But just something about the crisp, sparkly gold jerseys that you don't get enough of in the blacks or the whites. They made it prominent in the alternates. Absolutely unbelievable. I love it, 100%. Third, the New Jersey Devils. I love the black jersey with the cursive, and it looks so clean that I would go out and say I will find myself having one of those one day. It is gorgeous. I love the way the Devils created the – it just everything about it. I think what really gets me is the cursive lettering that's just crisp and clean Jersey, nothing against not new Jersey, not devils, just Jersey. It looks absolutely gorgeous on a black Jersey as well. just stunning. Love the devils, alternate jerseys. The Toronto Maple Leafs are another one. I really like, I love the Toronto Maple Leafs, um, black jerseys, right? It is the black. It mm-hmm. confused me a little bit. It's black. And then on the inside out yeah. is the logo. Justin Bieber design. Yeah. Uh, it was confused because I didn't realize that that was their alternate. I thought that was just something they did separately. So I was no, a little. They wear it a fair amount. But yeah, I love that they do that. That they have the insides, the the Justin Bieber gold. They I wear the them. Bieber part for warm ups, and then they flip them for the games. I love that. I love the black Me and too. blue. I think taking a franchise where black's not a common color in their logo, it's just blue and white. It's just black out of nowhere with the blue leaf. Stunning. Love it. Absolutely love it. And finally, the Anaheim Ducks. I love the orange. I love the old school style Ducks logo just sitting there. Uh, I, I just, I really think it looks clean. And there's just something about orange jerseys. I like the color orange, but an orange jersey with an old time feel to it just sits very well with me. So Hurricanes, Vegas, Devils, Toronto, Anaheim Ducks. Very good list. Very good list. There's going to be a lot of black on these. Uh, I think the black alternate jerseys, a lot of teams do very well for them, and that'll lead off my list. The Vancouver Canucks, their black jersey with the skate on it, and it's got the yellow Canucks logo, Mm -hmm. just so clean for me. Um, I I absolutely love that jersey, and I could see see myself owning three Canucks jerseys, and none of them are their home (laughs) or road. And you'll see why in a – couple minutes here because the second one on my list is their blue alternate jersey i think the canucks have the best overall catalog act wow the one with the stick yeah and i hated it at first when i first saw it i hated it i saw it in person like with these eyeballs and i'm like and granted it was the white one i like the blue one but the blue one is fucking awesome they are so cool I want a Quinn Hughes jersey of all of these. And, yeah, the Canucks blue one with the stick. It's, like, on the side. You could picture it, right? Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. And the, the green, it, it's just so cool. I love the Vancouver Canucks jersey catalog, and they take up two of my five favorite alternates. Um, you said the Anaheim Ducks, the orange ones. That's one I know you're in the minority on. Not from me. I like it. But it's the orange jersey that you like. I like the other Mighty Ducks jersey that they use with the purple and the teal. 
And that one is my, you know, that's in my favorite alternate set right now. It's, you know, it's just, it reminds me of the Mighty Ducks and how they were before. So T. Mussolini, Paul Correa, those guys, Mm -hmm. when they were playing the Devils in the Stanley Cup final in 03 and got their asses kicked. um, You know, I really like that alternate jersey. Um, Another one that I was looking at was Ottawa. I think Ottawa has three really nice jerseys in general. I love their new logo. It's technically an old logo, but it's new to some people. Uh, The black one. They're alternate. I would get one. I kind of want to get either a Stutzla or a Kachuk, you know, one of these. They are really, really cool. So the Ottawa Senators black jersey. And then I was back and forth for the fifth one. I thought of the Sharks black one. That was going to be an honorable mention. Um, I think in the end I'm going to end up for the final. Oh, do I do it? For the final alternate jersey. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Buffalo. Their black jersey with the old school Buffalo on it. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm seeing Owen Power and Rasmus Dahlin and Tage Thompson. It's a good one. I honestly think that jersey's like a superpower for them, too, because they don't lose while wearing it. I think they just, like, if that was their home jersey this year, they would be going to the playoffs. Um, it just seems like they play extremely well in it, but man, I love it. Black NHL alternate jerseys are yeah. really, really cool for me. So really Ottawa enjoy was so close to making my list. Yeah. Ottawa's are awesome. So that's Vancouver, Vancouver, <laughs> Anaheim, Buffalo, Ottawa. That's my list of that's alternate jerseys. List. There's some good jerseys in the NHL. No doubt. There's no doubt. You'll you'll never own every jersey you want. That's the problem. It's hard. No. It's hard. I would like to. Um, Frank, this season was the reverse retro 2.0s. Mm-hmm. What were your five favorite reverse retro 2.0s? Well, you know, it ain't the Hawks. <laughs> um, no, so first off, I got the Penguins. Love the old style Penguins logo, throwback, obviously retro. It looks great on the black jersey and the way the Penguins looking off to the side, it's just really clean. It makes me think of Mario Lemieux every time I look at that jersey. Um, so I got the Pittsburgh Penguins. Number two, New York Rangers. I love the Statue of Liberty. That That's truly like an old style. There's something about old school teams throwing it back retro. I love the Statue of Liberty on the jersey. It makes it look great. It makes it look different. I, I don't know. There's just something about it that just really draws my attention towards that jersey. Um, <laughs> I think. I'm going to have to go with the Vegas Golden Knights again. The black jersey with the Vegas style lettering. It's like that medieval, kind of similar to the Hurricanes alternate where you're like you're going into battle. I think when I see those jerseys, you're going into battle. It is called the Fortress. It is medieval. It's got that lettering. It is so cool. It is so clean. And Vegas has a, another one of the best catalogs in the league, in my opinion, as well. I like the Jets reverse retro jersey too. And I don't think a lot of people do. Once again, I think I'm in the minority. It's just a white jersey, but the the way the blue, it's a different type of blue that they use in their standard home jerseys, I think looks absolutely phenomenal. And um, yeah, I mean, the Jet logo on that, yeah, it just looks everything about it. I had the Jets Rhodes as my favorite because of their white and this white with that style blue. Reverse retro looks absolutely stunning. And then finally, because I don't think a team could have incorporated their city more into a jersey and just make it look so nice, the Florida Panthers. I love the palm tree. You're embracing the city that you're from. Not a lot of teams do that in their jersey. But the fact that you included a palm tree on your jersey, just to me, is just so cool and so crisp. I love it. So those are my five. Penguins, Rangers, Vegas, Jets, Panthers. I like your list. Very unique. I wouldn't have expected any of those to be on there except for one. We agree on one. Okay. And the one we agree on is Florida. Florida's jerseys were just so cool. I loved watching them play. They actually, I got to watch a whole ass game because they wore them against the Devils one of the times this year. And they looked so good while wearing them. I think it was against the Devils. It might have been the Bruins. I can't remember. I watched a whole game of Florida wearing them. They were really, really cool. And, you know, 
I think you nailed it perfectly. They encapture where they're from. It's an untraditional hockey market that, you know, as they win more, they're starting that crowd. Watch a Florida game. I just watched one in Florida. They played the Devils a couple nights ago. They're becoming a hot. Any place could be a hockey town. We can turn anywhere in the world into a hockey town. I believe it. That's why the show exists. And I'm on a mission to get more people watching the great game. So, and that's why I promote college. That's why I promote the CHL. I want you to watch the NHL. The Florida Panthers are a big, you know, help in that. So thank you to the Florida Panthers. It's a great Jersey and I'm happy they went with that kind of style. Uh, my number one favorite reverse retro. And I honestly think it's my favorite Jersey I've ever seen. I can't call it my favorite Jersey of all time because they've only, they haven't worn it. Like the, like the Red Wings have worn it. Um, but the, my favorite hockey Jersey I've ever seen was the Vancouver Canucks reverse retro from this year. Wow. I loved it so much. It is still, after all these months, the background on my phone. Wow. Bo Horvat has since been traded. But I will not change this. This is my background. This is hockey. And for those of you who are watching on, you know, or listening on audio, you're, you, you can't see it. But I have that as my background, and I'm not changing it. It'll be the middle. Of, it'll be the bags tournament. 100 <laughs> degrees outside, and hockey is on nobody's mind except mine. And... I will have that as my phone background. I love, love, love Vancouver's jerseys. I am going to buy a Quinn Hughes over the summer when they're hopefully a little cheaper if they're looking for summer deals or whatnot because I have a Jack Hughes in another team on my list, the New Jersey Devils. I really like that they threw it back and do use different colors from you know when they were the Kansas City Scouts mm -hmm. and the uh, Colorado Rockies, and they used the – the colors of food, blue, red, and yellow. And I, I just think the jersey's so cool. I love wearing it. It's white, but they it's not it's not green, red, and black or green, red, white. It's not black, red, green, like all their other jerseys. It's just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely loved it. I saw it in person, which is really cool. And yeah, I really like the devil. So I want to have a Quinn Hughes and a Jack Hughes reverse retro from this year i think that'll be really cool because i need that canucks jersey i'll probably buy the cheaper fanatics one but still i really really like it so and then uh the st louis blues have my second favorite um i don't know if i'll ever be able to get one but i would like to i just don't know who i would get they traded o'reilly they traded tarasenko like robert thomas i probably would get probably because um you know we saw him get drafted when you were wearing that or when they were wearing those hats that you're wearing right now but I really like the St. Louis Blues reverse retro. That is the fourth one I'm going to name. And then the other one came down to two. I, I have It's another one of those lists where I had six, and I got to narrow it down to five. I'm going to say I'm going to give the edge to the San Jose Sharks. They wore the California Golden Seals jerseys, and they were um, white with, like, the bright yellow and the oh, yeah. teal. Like really, really, really cool. Another one I would like when I was sharing Timo Meyer highlights when the Devils first traded for him, mm -hmm. a couple of them came up of him rocking one of those <laughs> beauties, and I was like, these are sick. So the other honorable mention was the Wild. I really like when they use the North Star colors. And a little birdie has mm -hmm. told me that those will be incorporated, that color scheme will be incorporated with the Minnesota Wild a lot more starting next year. So don't be surprised if you see – more of that color scheme, the Minnesota North Star colors for the wild that equal it equal, if not more than red and green. So that's wow. a little bit of a nugget from me as we head into the summer of hockey, where we start to see rumors and stuff. If you, that ends up coming to fruition, remember where you heard it first, um, Frank. So that list of reverse retro goes Vancouver, St. Louis, New Jersey, Florida, San Jose, with an honorable mention to Minnesota. A good list. I like talking jerseys. I like wearing jerseys. I like wearing jersey shirts. Um, it's one of my favorite things about hockey is the sweater. I mean, yeah, they, hockey's got some of the best jerseys in all the sports. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And I do the same thing with baseball. I love baseball jerseys. I bought a City Connect Padres last year because I thought they were just so sweet. So, and, you know, you might remember they have the bright colors. Mm -hmm. I'll probably be wearing it to – a pool party of some sort that you'll be attending at, you know, this year. It's just really cool. Mm -hmm. And I like that the, uh, the NHL do similar 
So hopefully they keep it going because they will earn a lot of my money if they continue to put out good product because it's just – it's one of those things. I, w- I want to get even a couple college jerseys and some WHL jerseys or, or just CHL Absolutely. jerseys in There's general. Cool jerseys out there. Imagine wearing a Regina Pats Bedard jersey to a party in like four years mm-hmm. or a Nico Heischer Halifax Mooseheads jersey. Or even if you found, if you got really lucky and found like a Patrick Kane London Knights jersey, or a Connor McDavid Erie Otters jersey, that's like, cool. Yeah, those sure. are so cool. So I would like to get my hands on some of those. We'll see. Um, next year's number one overall pick. I'm drawing a blank on his name, and I'm not going to think of it right now, unless somebody looks it up and puts it in the chat. But next year's number one overall pick. He's not Bedard, but he's a good player. Um, he plays for the Chicago Steel right now. So if you could get a Chicago Steel jersey in this guy's name and number, that would be cool. So oh, yeah. we'll see. Really like jerseys. What do you think? I thought it was incredible. I like jerseys too. Um, it's actually when you play like Hut in NHL, it's always fun to like buy some new jerseys and put them on your squad as well. I, th- I think that's one of the coolest things. So I like jerseys. Absolutely. And Frank, I know we got Tom watching. He mm-hmm. loves jerseys. And I I, I, I want to I want to see you rocking jerseys more. Let's go. Step up the jersey game. Yeah, I mean, I got a handful of them, but I just don't wear them enough. I know. I don't think any of us wear them enough. But Mac Celebrini. Yep, that's it. That is it. Cool. I, I'm not going to sit here and act like it's a lock that he's the number one overall pick in 2024, but he's he's my money's on him to be the number one overall pick next year. Um, unless like a he sure comes out of nowhere, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. Again, he's not Connor Bedard, so he could be dethroned in theory, but still a really good player that anybody would like to have. If the Hawks got him – or if the Hawks got Bedard and then stunk again next year, which is likely. I don't think Bedard turns one of these teams into a playoff team next year. Um, they they could be happy with this guy, too, if they got lucky again. Uh, Paul says, Tom has more jerseys than I have clothes and shoes in my closet. <laughs> that's what I like to hear. I mean, that's I, I, I love Paul, but that's what I like to hear. Need more hockey jerseys. We all need more hockey jerseys. I, I, I honestly feel like a lost human being without owning that Vancouver jersey. You like it that much, huh? I, I, it is my favorite jersey I've ever seen. It's honestly a shame that I haven't bought it yet. Wow. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of it. It's not like I have all this money pouring out where I could just buy it whenever I want. Otherwise, I would have. But I, oh, Frank, I don't know what it is. I honestly think it's my favorite jersey I've ever, ever, ever wow. seen. I want one so bad. Like, I could see myself getting one very soon. I want one so bad. And it's honestly a dirty shame. I'm ashamed of myself that I don't have one yet. It has been my phone background since August. Who would you get? Quinton Hughes. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I, look at that. He's so happy. <laughs> The colors are sick. Oh, my God. I want it so bad. I can't wait to have one on my back. You You will. No idea. You have no idea. Frank, that's just such a great Jersey conversation. And I know you're going to enjoy this next period just as much. And this is when people are going to join the chat and say, I thought this was a hockey show, man. They can't look up in the corner and see that we've been recording for a minute and fifty three seconds and haven't been or an minute, hour, an hour and fifty three minutes, and haven't talked about anything else other than hockey for that entire time. Period number three. Welcome to period three, Frank. Yesterday, I watched what I consider to be one of the coolest things cool. I've ever seen. It was very cool. It was a legendary moment in the history of sports yesterday when the World Baseball Classic came to a head in Miami, Florida between Team Japan and Team U.S. of A. Japan got out to a quick 3-1 lead. 
Well, the USA got out to a one nothing lead when Trey Turner hit his fifth home run of the tournament. That's a guy yeah. who hasn't even played a single game with his current Major League Baseball team, the Philadelphia Phillies, after spending his whole career with the Los Angeles Dodgers. He has been on fire. He gets Team USA out to a one nothing lead. Then a couple of unfortunate events for Team USA lead to some very fortunate events for Team Japan. And they end up with a 3-1 lead in the game. And then the big dog, Kyle Schwarber. Hey, Kyle. (laughs) What up, Kyle? He has a 10-pitch at-bat with a former teammate of his, one U Darvish. And you and Kyle, you and Kyle come from two very different places. But they all come together on the baseball diamond, and that's the beauty of it. Kyle hits a couple two tree foul home runs off of Shohei or off of you Darvish. And he finally on the tenth pitch of the F bat <laughs> gets him. And he sends it to Pluto. And listen to this, Frank. Now in his life, Kyle Schwarber has hit a home run in the NL wildcard game. The AL wild card game, the ALDS, the NLDS, the ALCS, the NLCS, the World Series, the World Baseball Classic preliminary round, and the World Baseball Classic championship. That's unbelievable. He has hit a home run in almost every kind of game. We need to get him an all star game home run, and we need to. Spring um, training? He's got a couple spring training home runs. Yes, Tom is correct. He came up with the Nationals. And then he was traded to the Dodgers two years? Or was it last year? It was Last year was his first year. Yeah, he played with the Nationals. No, he was certainly with the yeah. Nationals. They, he won the World Series there. Did I say he was with the Dodgers his whole career? I think so. A mistake on my part. He was definitely with the Nationals. He was on that World Series champion team mm-hmm. with – um. Juan Soto and mm-hmm. uh, Anthony Rendon and Scherzer and Strasburg, uh, Adam Eaton. Yeah, that Nationals team is freaking filthy. They get rid of Harper, and then they win the World Series the next year. It was just truly awesome team. But um, then we get to the ninth inning, and Mr. Mike Trout is in the hole. And we see Shohei Otani's polite ass warming up in the bullpen. And they were worried about how they were going to get him warmed up because he's a DH. How do you warm up somebody who's in the real dugout? Well, they found a way to get him in the bullpen while Team USA was batting in the uh, bottom of the eighth. And he got warmed up. He comes in the game. Um, can't, who got? Oh, it was Jeff McNeil found a way on base with a walk. The nine hitter. He pinch hit for Tim Anderson. Yeah. And... Then Mookie Betts grounds out, double play, two outs. Two outs, up by one. Shohei Otani on the mound, Mike Trout. The two teammates who have just been the two best players of (laughs) – they're right there with Barry Bonds and A-Rod for the best players of my lifetime. And Pedro Martinez, who was a pitcher. Those are, in my opinion, the five best players I've ever seen. And – there are people who are going to discount a couple of them for other reasons. Those are the five best players I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I wasn't around for Teddy. Uh, you know, I don't clearly remember Babe Ruth or Mickey Mantle or Joe DiMaggio. I remember Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, guys like that. The count runs full. <laughs> Otani throws two baseballs 101 miles per hour past Mike Trout for strikes. And then with a 3-2 count, he had the unmitigated gall to spin a slider to Mike Trout. Swing and miss. Japan wins. It was an epic conclusion to this outstanding World Baseball Classic. Did you watch it? Did you enjoy it? Did that at-bat come off as cool to you as it did to the rest of the world? Of course I had to tune in. It's the World Baseball Classic Championship. I'm a sports guy. I watch all sorts of sports, so I had to tune in. Um, it was, it ended in movie like fashion. Yep. It was unbelievable. Interestingly, Japan went seven and oh, 
Japan's got a very good team. They didn't lose once. They scored 56 runs in seven games. They beat the U.S., which Japan was the dog yesterday against the United States, surprisingly because of how good Japan was, and they were undefeated. I mean, I shouldn't say not a lot of people give J- Japan enough credit because I think everybody knows Japan's got a good team, but it just they're, they're, they got a special team. I love that it came down to two teammates, Shohei Otani and Mike Trout, two of the best players in the MLB. Full count, it's like something was special there. It was either a strikeout or he was going to tie the game on one swing. It was not going to be a walk or a flyout. It was a strikeout or home run. Those were the only two outcomes. Japan wins 3-2, to two, and it just makes you want 2026 to come around a little bit quicker. That's when the next World Baseball Classic will return. I believe they don't have a location yet of where the games will be played, but um, 2026 is when it returns. Yeah, uh, the location, there's always like four locations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, so great. It was pretty good. Let me ask you something. This is going to get me canceled or something. Uh-oh. What were you rooting for when Shohei Otani stepped on the mound with Mike Trout in the box? Well, I want the U.S. to win. I wanted Mike Trout to hit a home run. Okay. Why? Oh, I wanted Shohei Otani to shove it right up Mike Trout's ass. Oh, my God. Uh, without hesitation, I wanted him to strike him out on a nice three-pitch mix. It has a lot more to do than country pride for me. I mean, you know that, Frank. When we watch the World Cup of Hockey or, you know, the Olympics in the with NHL players involved, what do I root for? I root for Team USA is always my second favorite thing. The Devils players, first and foremost. If he sure's on a breakaway against Team USA, bury that shit. Bury it. <laughs> End that shit. Go Switzerland. You wow. know, it doesn't mean I hate America or it's not my favorite country. Because it is. Of course, I live here. I'm proud to be American. When it comes to sports, sometimes I allow myself to see the bigger picture. And Shohei Otani striking out Mike Trout to win the World Baseball Classic was the best option for baseball. That is an undeniable mm-hmm. fact, in my opinion. I rooted for it with no hesitation. I gave a nice little when Otani got him because, and I wanted Team USA to win going into the baseball game. I want Team USA to beat Japan. Let me make that very clear. I don't think it's hard to understand at all. I actually think arguing with me makes me understand how dumb you actually are. I was not rooting against Team USA. When it became the moment that Shohei Otani can put his thing on the table and strike out Mike Trout, who's known to be the best hitter ever. Not even, wasn't even a thought in my mind. Wow. It was so I like, there was no divide inside me whatsoever. It was so obvious that I wanted Shohei Otani to strike out Mike Trout for the game of baseball. And, Very interesting. Did. and, and, and now I know, I don't even have to wonder. I know Shohei Otani is the greatest player on earth. He's wow. he's a better pitcher than Mike Trout is a hitter. He's could, He might be a better hitter than Mike Trout is a hitter. And there's never been anyone like him. And people think that there's a line of them coming. Uh, no, there's not. We don't even know a kid in high school that's doing what Otani did. You know, we haven't identified any of the next Otani yet. They thought it might be Oscar Colas, who's in the White Sox system. He gave up pitching right when people started saying that about him. Eh. Otani is so awesome. I honestly think like he's right there with Mick Jesus as my favorite players to watch in all. Uh, Patrick Mahomes. When the Chiefs are on, I'm when the Chiefs are on national TV. You know me. I'm watching the Chiefs. I've watched probably 50 Oilers games this year. I, I, I'm, it's must see TV for me. Can't wait to watch the angels. Are you going to have an Otani Jersey? I have an Otani shirt in my site that I'm wearing out tonight, but are you going to get like a Jersey Jersey? I might. And I have a Mike Trout Jersey. I will. uh, You're right. I probably should get an Otani Jersey. I like 
They have a white one. It's like beige-ish, and it says angels in like a blockier font. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Okay. I also like I also like their uh, their city connects. So maybe I'll scoop one of those. Uh, you're right. I should get an Otani jersey. I'm as big of a fan of Otani as I've ever been a fan of a baseball player. If he goes to the Cubs, <laughs> I will root for the Cubs when he's playing. Wow. Uh, Frank, when I told you yesterday that I had no hesitation. That happens too. Huh? Oh, I would say so. I would say he's – I think he's going to go to the Dodgers. I think that's why the Dodgers – When that happen? After this year? After this year or yeah. during this year. And whoever they trade him to, I don't necessarily think he signs with long-term unless it's the Dodgers. I just – I can't understand – like the Dodgers, they didn't go after anyone this offseason. They didn't go after DeGrom or Turner to bring him back or, you know, even a Dansby who was the cheapest of the big four shortstops. They didn't try mm -hmm. for Bogarts. Um, they let everybody go. They didn't even, they weren't even in the Aaron judge conversation. They almost let him go to San Francisco. He, Aaron judge had a better chance of going to the Bay than the Dodgers. Something's fishy. That's not how they operate. That's not how the Dodgers roll. Just doing nothing. I know. It's I think they're good. going. I think they get Otani, but I think that if I had to make a list of top five teams, it would be them. Staying with the Angels has to be in the conversation. Whatever team they're originally on has to be in the mix. Mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna like this. The Mariners? I think the Seattle Mariners have as good of chance of anybody not wow. named not named the Dodgers. Wow. I have the Dodgers head and heels over everyone, and then two through five. Equal chance. The Mariners staying with the Angels, the Cubs, and the Yankees. And the Mets. Yeah. Wow. If he went to the Cubs, I I don't know if I would get a jersey, per se. But I know what I would be thinking in my head. Frank, when I tell you there was no hesitation yesterday. I believe you. For Otani. You. <laughs> it wasn't even close. <laughs> we know we know the political history between Japan and freaking the USA. <laughs> but it doesn't matter with baseball. It does not matter with baseball. And I have no shame in my feelings. Speaking. If we go ahead. No, I was going to say if we pumped out a guy like that, I'd be rooting for him just the same. There is nothing like it would be like if McDavid played goalie every fifth day. I mean, oh. Oh my God! Speaking of the MLB, did you op did you ever have a chance to open the MLB app since the update? Uh, like I, with with the World Baseball Classic. See, I I didn't use the MLB app for the World Baseball Classic, so I'm like new to the app. I opened it today for like the first time since last season. Um, it's gonna take some time to get used to. It's a lot different. It's not your old style. I'm trying to see if I'm missing something. It looks the same to me. Maybe mine just hasn't updated the way yours has because mine still has the World Baseball Classic stuff. It hit like scores. Oh, no. No, 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 no. You want me to show you mine? Yeah, I'm going to update mine right now while I while we speak. It doesn't need to be updated because then I'll, I'll let you do it. If it It's going to take – Time to get used to. Let me tell you, because even when you go like, oh yeah, it, it says the MLB app is refreshed for 2023. Oof. Oh, dude, I didn't know it was like this because it added all the World Baseball Classic stuff. So I thought it was updating on its own. No, no what? No. And the World Baseball Classic stuff stayed updated. Update it right now. It's gonna take some time. I. It's a little crisp. It's crisp, but it's gonna take some time to get used to the new layout. Continue with MLB. My favorite team is the White Sox. Oh, by the way, this is the first year where I now set the Mariners and the Cubs as my favorite team. Oh, I set a bunch of follow teams. So I set, I set the White Sox as my follow team. You see the gold star next yep. to them. And then I follow the Atlanta Braves, Boston Red Sox, Chicago Cubs, New York Mets, and San Francisco Giants. Yeah, I only do the two. Yeah, I used but to have the – Yankees. I might add the Yankees later on, depending on what Judge does. And sometimes I set whatever division rival clearly is competing with the Sox for the top of the division. Uh -huh. I'll set them late in the season. 
I like last agree. year, I got Guardians notifications, but I turned it off during the off season. Oh, you can follow <laughs> players now. Yeah, I didn't do that. At least yeah, not I'm now. not. I'm not either. Uh... Oh, the score still looks the same. Mm, does it though? Is it? Let me see. Click on a game that's going on. Little different. No, that's going on. Is that going on? Yeah. Like where they throw the pitches. Oh. Um... If that's the same, then something's different on my phone. I got to show you. Let me see. Something's up then. I don't know. Now it's like being weird on me. Let me show you just one sec. Let me show you this. Yeah, the live thing looks the same. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, I mean, I'm regardless of this. I'm so this is the new loading screen I get. Yeah, me too. Okay, so you got that, right? Yeah. Oh, this the White is, Sox are playing a squid. Look, look at this. Just opening up, just being, you know, the little home tab on the bottom? Yeah. Look at the way it looks. You got to. Oh, maybe mine will change. And just wait. So then I hit scores. The scores are the same, right? But when I go to like where they throw the pitches. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see it. Is yeah. that like it for you too? Yep. Mm -hmm. It's so different. Yeah, it is. That's pretty sick. I think it's it's a little more cleaner and crisp. But if you got to choose between Otani going to the rebuilding Cubs or the contending Mariners, which would you choose? Go ahead, lie. Go I ahead. The Cubs. You know, that's a lie. He lying. He lying through his teeth. He's lying through his teeth. Nope. If, the, if the Mariners got Otani, they would legitimately have a chance to win the World Series right now. Listen. Right now. I, at the end of the day, the Cubs are my team. I understand. The but, Mariners are like my team too, but they're like they're my AL team. I understand. What do you, you know who my NL team is? Uh, the Giants? No, but I like them. I have their notification set. It's the Braves. The Dodgers? It's oh. the Braves. Oh, the Braves. Of course. I knew that. I knew and that. if the Braves had a chance to win 100 games and the White Sox max was 70 and I got to choose where a free agent went, be like, let the Sox keep losing, keep building. Like, But eventually I think the Cubs are going to be better. And then no, if you have Otani on your team. Yeah, I understand. I mean, Otani's going to get half a bill. I got good odds. They're either going to come to the Mariners or the Cubs, potentially. So that's pretty good odds. Either way, I could be happy. Yeah. The nice thing about staying with the or going to the Mariners, the flight to Japan significantly less than if he went to Chicago or New York or yeah. something like that. And I do think that's in the consideration why he went to the Angels. So. We'll see what happens. But Japan wins the World Baseball Classic. Outstanding stuff. Now we're just over a week away from the start of the Major League Baseball season. One week and one day. So eight days. And make sure you tune in tomorrow to Crosstown Crosstalk at 2 p.m. where we will go over all of that. Frank, what the H is going on in March Madness? I love it. I absolutely love it. The madness has begun. There's been it's been one of the craziest years I think of all time potentially. Um, I I mean of course I want to win March Madness, but I always root for a good upset. There's just something about this Cinderella story. I had Purdue in my Final Four. I was like pumped when they lost. I like I texted you like they did it. They did. It. I can't believe they did it for the second time ever. A 16 seed has beat a one seed. Not to mention number 15 Princeton who knocked out Arizona, who was in my final two, is now in the Sweet 16. It wasn't a one-and-done. They beat a nine seed. I, I don't remember who they beat. 
but they beat whoever to get to the Sweet 16. So we got a, a 15 seed in the Sweet 16. Furman beats Virginia on a, you see the turnover. The guy in Virginia turns it over. Tons of madness through the first two rounds. Um, number one, Kansas lost to Arkansas by one. So now there's only two one seeds left. I mean, you look at the bracket now in the Sweet 16, you got a nine in there, an eight, a seven, a six, a five, a couple threes, and only two ones. I mean, it's just, it's so wide open. Florida Atlantic University, FAU's really surprised me. I didn't think they'd get through Missouri, but no, they've really impressed me and they've won two games. I mean, there's just been tons of madness so far. And to me, this is the most predictable season of March Madness that I've ever seen. Unpredictable season of March Madness that I've ever seen. And it was interesting because they had the panel of Charles Barkley and a couple other uh, panelists discussing March Madness before it began. And they said, this might be one of the most wide open years that there have ever been. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, it could be, but I doubt it. I don't think it's going to be that wild, but no, they were, they hit it spot on. This has been so unpredictable. I love it. And I cannot wait to see what's next. Didn't we go in saying like there's not three or four teams that are like so dominant this year? Yeah, like, it wasn't the closest like the thing year was probably Gonzaga and Baylor. Remember yeah. that? Like we knew yeah. Gonzaga and Baylor would go. Kind of had the feeling this year. Yeah, you don't know. I mean, have you adjusted like your thoughts? Like, who do you think is going to win? You're probably still on Houston. Mm, I don't know. I mean, Houston's got the advantage because when it gets to the Final Four in the championship, if they get there, they're playing on home court. They're playing in Houston. It's held yeah. in Houston. That's a huge advantage right there, which is part of the reason why I was leaning towards Houston. Uh, I think Alabama, the other one seed that's us, got a really good chance. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we got a stunner somewhere, somewhere that nobody's predicting. If a Michigan State wins it all as a seven seed, something ridiculously crazy, which I don't think it's going to be Michigan State that wins it all. I'm just saying, using that as an example, like something out of nowhere could happen. It just feels like that type of year. I'm kind of swaying towards Alabama winning it all. Interesting. That would be really cool because I picked them in one of mine, and, of course, that's what I want. What about UCLA? UCLA's got a very, very good team. Very good team. They were seconds away from winning the Pac-12 championship, and Arizona miraculously – Hits a three with little time left. So UCLA has impressed me all year. They got plenty of talented players. I'm drawing a blank on some of their names. Uh, but, no, they have a very, very good lineup of players. They're very deep. They're a very deep team. One of the deepest in the NCAA. I picked them to win another one, so that's what I like to hear. My yeah. other champion of the three brackets, I did Kansas. At Kansas, that was rough. Lost to Arkansas by one. It's yep. a very tight game. Arkansas is another very good team, underrated as a nine seed or an eight, eight seed. I don't know, nine or eight seed. Very underrated, though, for where they were ranked. Remember we were debating them versus Illinois? I took Arkansas against Illinois in the bracket. Oh, yeah. I, I kind of figured, I mean, Illinois is not that good. And they were better when they had Cerebello and Kobe Coburn. They just don't got those guys anymore. So they're, yeah. not, they're not the Illinois that we knew a few years ago that we watched by Tony. I mean, yeah, that's no. not that team. Absolutely. Um, thank God Loyola didn't make it this year. Oh, <laughs> I declared. Oh, I team. declared war. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> uh, um, Frank, what are we watching this weekend? By this time next week, we will be done with Thrones. That is my number one priority. We started season eight. We're on episode two, and it's a short season, only six episode season. So. It might be polished off before the weekend, but if not, for sure, by the next time, uh, this time next week, it'll be done. So then uh, that'll be that. That's the number one priority. Besides, like, the Survivor I'm going to watch tonight, obviously. That's a lot of fun. But besides, like, what you would expect me to watch, Game of Thrones is number one priority right now. For sure. March Madness. Absolutely. Yep. Getting ready for Major League Baseball. Lots of great races in the NHL. Same That'll be me. my what am I watching next week when you ask me Major League Baseball. Yeah. Uh, my what are you watching is what have I watched now. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you something. You like Star Wars. Yeah. Mando. Well, Mando, of course. The new episode came out today. Can't wait to watch it. I want to tell you something. And I want you to hear me out. Because I know not, not a lot of people have a lot of time. 
you know, the, our time with our shows and what we watch is valuable. I watched Tales of the Jedi. It just came out to Disney Plus within the last couple months. Why does that sound familiar? It's it's the same style as Clone Wars, like the drawing, like the oh, animation. Okay. It, it's a bad batch. Like it's like that. There are six 15 minute episodes. Listen to me. You sit down, you watch them, you just do it. Soon. Don't wait. Don't I got other shows. There's six 15 minute episodes. It's like watching one episode of Thrones. You can do it. It is awesome. I loved it. Katie says I, they're spooky. I absolutely loved it, Frank. There's one episode. It's kind of like What If, except it's canon story. Like What If is like stuff that didn't right. happen. This stuff did happen. But by what I'm saying, like it's like What If in the sense of every episode bounces to a different part of a timeline. Gotcha. And like different areas. So like mm -hmm. one episode focuses on Ahsoka when she was first born. One is a mission between Obi Wan Kenobi with, or one is a mission with Count Dooku as the master and Qui Gon Jinn as the apprentice. Six 15 minute episodes, the easiest watch you'll ever see, but freaking awesome. I'm going to oh, watch it again. Oh, trust me, I'm going to watch it. Frank, I honestly think it's one of those things like, just do it now. Because just because I priority. want it. Thrones priority, dude. It's the the whole season is the length of an episode of one th one episode of Thrones. That's that's one episode I could be closer to finishing. Then finish Thrones and watch Tales of the Jedi. You can have it done by Sunday. You could. We'll see. I'm gonna watch it. I promise. I will watch it. It is frick. You could have it done by our next show. There's a chance. It takes an hour to watch the whole season. It. Oh my! It was just so good. I loved it. And Joey had the same conversation with me. Don't let your other shows get in the way. It it doesn't take time. It it's so worth it. And he was. I'll right. watch it for sure. He was right. I don't so, have to watch anything before it, right? No, you know the story of Star Wars. Yeah. You know it bounces around. It there's basically anything from anything from episode one to order 66 a 15 minute story from six different little areas okay so cool so cool for sure frank what is your favorite hockey story of the week you may know a man named freddie goudreau frederick freddie goudreau. hockey yeah freddie hockey for the minnesota wild well yesterday's game before he played he wore mismatched socks in honor of his nephew noah who has Down syndrome, and he's also the godson, or uh, Noah is also Goudreau's godson, um, and the reason you wear mis mismatched socks, because I think yesterday was um, like National Down Syndrome Awareness Month, or day or something, March 21st is, is uh, National Down Syndrome Awareness Day, and the reason that you, you wear those mismatched socks is because, as he described in a quote, it is beautiful unique uniqueness of every human being. That's what it represents. And I, I love this story because it's a guy who has a platform. He has a lot of people following and watching, and he uses that platform to spread awareness for um, kids and adults and humans that have uh, Down syndrome. So I thought it was a great way of showing that the beauty of – that every human, no matter if you're Down syndrome or what you are, you have beauty no matter what. It's a beautiful uniqueness of every human being. I loved it. Um, I thought it was very cool of him to do. Like I said, not everybody who has a platform like Goudreau does something like that. So I thought it was uh, I thought it was very cool of him to do something like that. Frank, I honestly think that's one of the cooler stories you've shared um, on the show. Absolutely. Really cool. Um, I was trying to come up with something along those lines. I 
this is one of those weeks where like I'm just not going to compete with your story. You know how like one time you talked about hockey or and I gave something sentimental. Uh huh. Yeah, that's just not. <laughs> that's just not. It's going to be flipped this week. Um, I was doing some digging, and I saw. <laughs> this is not necessarily related directly to the game of hockey, but it's also not like it's not sentimental like yours. Mm -hmm. My story stinks compared to yours, but I saw that. So next week's the Boston marathon or next month. Yep. <laughs> you saw this story. This was going to be my story until I saw this. Yeah. Cause we, we both do the same thing. We go look through the <laughs> NHL news, <laughs> NHL.com and we look through the news and like, Hey, what, which one of these is cool. And you know, I was going to talk about the NCAA tournament and how excited I am about it. And I'm like, we talked about that in the first period. Uh -huh. But when I saw that big Z, Zidane Chara is running in the Boston Marathon, it made me want to get on a flight wearing some light blue and gold and go to freaking Boston, wear them their town's colors, and uh -huh. run in the marathon myself. Big Z is running uh -huh. in the Boston Marathon? That is my favorite. Well, now after hearing your story, it's my second favorite hockey story of the week. That was Shout out Freddie Hockey, though. Shout out Freddie Hockey. I thought that was really cool that he did that. Yeah. I was going to talk about that complete a-hole James Reimer. <laughs> I'm sure you know all about that. That complete absolute muffin. <laughs> you don't want to wear a jersey with a I couple know. rainbows on it. I know. It's stupid. Because of you're going to hide behind your religion. I would have respected him more if he said, I don't want to, period. But no, you go and hide behind God and your religion and all. What a coward. What an absolute yep. coward. We shame. know what your intentions are, James Reimer, who I've been a big fan of in my life. Optimus Rhyme, we used to call him. You know, go Leafs, go. Ugh. Nasty. Get out of here, James Reimer. Yeah. I hope it's you give up five goals every game the rest of the year and don't come back because no one wants you next year. And it's funny because one of my favorite jerseys in sports is the Denver Nuggets rainbow jerseys. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, it looks cool. Yeah, they all look cool. Yeah. People are offended by a rainbow. Sucks for them. Couldn't be me. Because they have to have an opinion on the way others live their life. I actually own a BB-8 shirt that's rainbow. It's yeah, like a I, yeah, I love that shirt. Absolutely. Because you don't worry about how others live their life. You support yeah. you support other people's ability to live the life the way they want to. Exactly. Yeah. It's interesting how that works. Fuck James Reimer. Clown. It's a shame. Well, nobody likes him anymore. That's the nice thing. Uh, Frank, you know who wants to like you? People That's who weird. are trying to make some money. And those people are going to be told how to make some money in America's favorite podcast segment of the week. Breaking Birds. Where's my money, bitch? Where's my money? Bitch. All right. Ready to go. I got four picks. One a little out of the ordinary. That's something I don't normally do. Starting off with the lousy slate of NHL games today. There's only two, but actually pretty interesting games uh, they should be. We got Pittsburgh at Colorado is the one I'm going to focus on. Like we were talking about Pittsburgh, they need to find their way. Lost four in a row. Everything downhill since that game against Montreal when they got when they let up six goals to that stinky team. Well, Pittsburgh won the first meeting against Colorado. It's hard to see Pittsburgh finally bouncing back against Colorado a mile high above elevation, especially after winning the first meeting. I see the season series being split at 1-1. I like the Colorado Avalanche money line at minus 162. It's a hefty price. There's really nothing else I could find because the other game with the Oilers, there was nothing I liked in there, and they were like something outrageous, like minus 400 and something. So for the NHL, we're going to have to stick with Colorado Moneyline at minus 162. 
you're going to have to bet a little bit more if you want to win a little bit more. Um, but I, I think it's a good rest. I think it's a fair price. I'll take Colorado at home against Penguins, who have not have been dog meat lately. And very well, Pittsburgh could win this game and bounce back. But I just, I just don't see it happening against the Avalanche while the Avalanche are at home. That being said, a little pivot. I also like Colorado to score first in this game at minus 136. Pittsburgh has failed to score first in three straight games. I think that trend's going to continue. So I like Colorado to score the first goal of the game at minus 136. That ultimately could go either way. I mean, the Penguins could jump up two to nothing and Colorado could win six to two. But I just, I just, I like the way, I like Colorado in this spot. So I think because the Colorado money, money line was so much at minus 162, if you want to do something else in the Colorado game, I like Colorado to score first at minus 136. Next, we're going to go to the NBA. I like to bounce around. You know, if you're a fan of breaking bets, you know, I like to bounce around. I get picks of all sports, cater to all the fans. The Warriors, the, um, the I almost said Stanley Cup winning, the NBA championship reigning champs of the NBA, the Golden State Warriors, are playing the Dallas Mavericks. Warriors are one of the worst teams I've seen on the road. It, it's, it's, they might be one of the best teams to have one of the worst all-time road records. It just doesn't make sense. They are 8-29 and 29 on the road, which is just blasphemy because they got a very talented team. But they're going against the Dallas Mavericks, who Luka Doncic is probable for the game. And when the Mavs are fully healthy, they are championship contenders. Right now, they're not fully healthy. And even if Doncic plays, they're not fully healthy. But... I will take them at home against one of the worst road teams in the league. For some reason, they just don't know how to shoot the ball when they're on the road. So I like the Dallas Mavericks money line at minus 109. And then finally, I got to give a, a March Madness pick. I, I got to. We're in March Madness season. This only happens once a year. Tomorrow, number seven Michigan State takes on number three Kansas State. Tom Izzo is March. He is the definition of March. When March comes around, Throw the records out the window. Throw everything out of the window. Tom Izzo coaches Michigan State. That's it. He is the definition of March Madness. I love Michigan State to upset number three Kansas. And the money line on Michigan State's minus 137. They came in. They beat number 10 USC. They beat number two Marquette. And if this was the regular season, I might be a little weary about this pick. I might take a step back, but because this is March, I'm taking Michigan State all the time. I love Michigan State to upset Kansas State. Money line at minus 137. Those are my picks to you. Hopefully we could sweep the board and we could come back next week and I could be 24 and 16. Absolutely. My favorite part about breaking bets is you being one and three in the NFL and the one is the Super Bowl. <laughs> too funny too funny we'll, we'll get the nfl up back by the end of the year oh yeah i agree as long as you understand that the chiefs are gonna repeat no i don't know i honestly i have no idea that we have a long way to go before we can truly evaluate because the bears are no longer the worst team in the nfl all the signings they've made they got, they got two of the top 10 free agent signings. Yeah. So I can't call, I can't look at their roster and say it's as bad as Texas or Houston anymore. Um, there are a couple other teams, but the Eagles have taken a big hit. You know, we'll see what happens. But I don't know. I'm excited for football. I'm excited for hockey. I like, I'm really excited for hockey right now. I, <laughs> I don't blame you. This, this league, it, it's looking nice right now. So. We will see what happens. Frank, this has been a great show. We've yeah. had some great hockey discussion. And people need to know that they come to this show to talk about all sorts of hockey. We're going to be covering Absolutely. the NCAA tournament. Uh, by this time next week, the field will be down a little bit. Um, we'll be recapping it all. I'm going to try and get Frankie to keep up with it. Because um, I know Snuggerud and Cooley are going to shove it right up his hoop one day. Watching Cooley yeah. play in Arizona and... Nuggerud playing for St. Louis. So those are two common Hawk opponents. So that'll be fun. Um, yeah. Devils will be clinched by next show. 
That's, yeah, they should. That'll be the prediction. Their magic number is four. Yeah, they should. I could see it happen. Any f- combination of points won or lost by Pitt. Their, their magic number could be two before the end of tonight. If Pittsburgh loses to Colorado, they can enter the p- playoffs with a win on Thursday. So that's cool. That's pretty cool. Let's go Devils. That's our show. I hope everybody enjoyed watching today. We, you know, had that all that great conversation throughout. Um, and then in the third period, we got to the World Baseball Classic where Japan became champions over Team USA. March Madness going strong. Make sure you're reading all of my work at thewindycity.com, puckpros.com, blackandteal.com, puckandpicksports.com, and southsideshowdown.com. All sorts of great content going out over there with about – a uh, week and a half left in March. I have a lot of stuff to do before this month comes to an end, and I'm very much looking forward to it. You can keep up with all things hockey and baseball, especially for me. And then on the football side of things, the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Chicago Bears, both at completely different spots in their group. And we will be taking care of that. So make sure you follow along. I'm on Twitter at Frank or at Vinny Parisi. I almost said I'm you. I'm on Twitter at Vinny Parisi um, and Frankie's on Twitter at the King Bean. And you can check out all his work at apptrigger.com where he's covering all the latest and greatest from the video game world. There are lots of great stuff going on right now. So make sure you're following Frankie along in terms of that area of entertainment. And again, that's at the King Bean on Twitter at trigger.com to read the articles. He shares them all on Twitter as well. So make sure you go. Um, lots of great shows here on the Barroom Network. I'll be back tomorrow, 2 p.m., Crosstown Crosstalk, to recap more in depth what went on in the World Baseball Classic in addition to getting you ready for the second-to-last show before opening day. The following week, the show is opening day, so that's super exciting. Can't wait for that. Frank, any last words before we hit it on out of here? Um, me. Meet from Frank Foster says, Vinny and Frank, thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope everybody enjoys what is probably going to be a spectacular weekend. The weather seems like it's going to be a little bit nicer. And don't just tune into my show on Thursday. Make sure you watch the other great shows here on the Barroom Network. I know we got plenty of guys getting you ready for the 2023 NFL draft. And then the return of South Burbs Hitman Monday night where we will get into all things White Sox baseball as we head into the season. So I'm very much looking forward to being part of that show for another year. It's been great. I can't wait. And as always, thank you for listening.